I'm Hulk's son-in-law. We swung a lot of chairs. We climbed a lot of ladders. And we broke a lot of tables. Now we take it to the cage. Lockdown for the World Heavyweight Championship. And lockdown, we're going to reinvent our history. Reinvent our history. Wes Briscoe, it's going to be you versus the greatest wrestler in the world. One-on-one in a steel cage. How could you? Are you freaking kidding me? Respect Kurt Angle, you don't respect the business. I made a mistake by trusting you. The fact of the matter is, Tilo Brown is the VP of Aces and Ace. This is the team that will dominate TNA. This is the club that will dominate in 2013. It's a good day to be a bad guy. Wrestling presents the most dangerous event of the year, Lockdown. Welcome inside the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. You are looking at the largest live crowd in TNA wrestling history. And they are Texas size fired up for Lockdown. Hello, everyone. I'm Todd Kelly along with the professor, Mike Tanay. The human suplex machine, Taz. The Alamo is synonymous with historic battles. And tonight, Taz, Team TNA goes to war with Aces and Eights inside Lethal Lockdown. Ha! A war. Bottom line, Team TNA gets Aces and Eight tonight. Sting's crew gets dropped. And of course, Mike, the huge main event, World Heavyweight title on the line. It was the decision of our general manager, Hulk Hogan, to name Bully Ray as the number one contender, the challenger to Jeff Hardy. Bully Ray's first opportunity to become world champion is tonight, and that storied history between Bully and Hardy has brought out mutual respect between the two. Cannot wait for that, and what better way to kick things off than with championship action. The X Division title will be up for grabs. New champion Kenny King defends for the very first time to kick off lockdown. The bowling contest scheduled for one fall is for the X Division Championship. Introducing first from the Philippines, Dima Ion. What a way to kick things off. Championship matchup, Mike Zima Ion. Former X Division champ would love to regain the gold. Two challengers for the new champion, Kenny King. One of the two, as you mentioned, has held the gold in the past. This is the opportunity for Zima Ion to regain that X Division championship. And his opponent from Cold Pepper, Virginia, Christian York. Christian York, the other challenger, a gut check winner. What a dream come true this would be for him if he can finally get it done and claim championship gold here in the largest, in front of the largest audience ever in TNA wrestling, Taz. Well, definitely a lot of pressure right there on Christian York. Even though he's new to this company, he's not new to our industry. And their opponent from Las Vegas, Nevada, your X Division champion, Kenny King. This my man right here. There's the champ. Kenny King, X Division champ, loves to shine under those bright lights. 
was just ruthless in his pursuit of the X Division Championship. Finally got it done against it. former champ Rob Van Dam. It was one week ago, this past Thursday, Impact Wrestling. Kenny King risked it all to become X Division Champ. If Kenny King lost that match to Van Dam, he was out of the X Division. No future title shots, but that was not the case. Kenny King prevailed. Kenny King is champ, and the three-way is underway. Here we go, all men will be in the ring at the same time. First one to score a pinfall or submission will be the X Division champ. So, tough spot for Kenny King to be in, Taz, because- Well, yeah, it's especially, uh, it's not fair. It's not fair to the champion. It's not fair to Kenny King, let's be honest here. And at least you admitted that, so that's a good start to show. Well, champion's advantage thrown right out the window in a match like this. Pace picks up here, a look at the counter there by Christian York, and just trucks him with a clothesline. Back in November, when Christian York won that gut check, it was coming off a match against Zima Ion. You talked earlier about familiarity. These three guys have faced each other on multiple occasions. We'll see if that familiarity hurts or helps. Oh, a little piece out there by Kenny King. Not the first time we've seen that. Kenny needs to be careful, though, because if an attempt for a submission or pinfall happens, oh, well, you gotta worry about that right now. Well, Christian York calls the audible, takes the action to King on the outside. The high flying action in the X Division. You gotta be careful, though. See my eye on this kid, can, he can sell. Oh! oh. Tell you what, Christian York been on top of his game well, until that point. He's had an answer for everything. Good counters thus far, but he got caught into that rail. Now Kenny King, look at this. Oh, oh God! Oh, 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 man. Wow! Tried to use the back of Zima Ion as a springboard, and my goodness, did he pay for it there. Sure did. Sure did. Hope that young man's okay. That was nasty. Mike, you talked about the champion taking a risk to win the title. He took a big risk there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Whoa! Corkscrew dive by Zima Ion. And we've seen in the past just how devastating he can be coming off the top. Full twist in midair by Zima Ion, one of the two challengers as these three individuals just putting it all on the line in an effort to be X Division champ as we take another look. Well, watch Kenny look King here. Oh, God. Kind of looked like he was going for a moonsault off the back of Ion. Again, that cost to insanity, athleticism, and daredevil-like tactics by Zima Ion. That was a, just a scary moment for the X Division champion who's out of this matchup for the moment, which, as you mentioned, could be costly. Look out here, springboard by King, and a huge step breaker. What the hell did Kenny, Kenny King recover from what just happened to him? Saying the same thing, amazing recovery. Watch Christian York. Looking for the win. Oh. Well, that's the, that's the issue. If you're Kenny King, you take those very high-risk maneuvers, and you can't go and break up a pin cover. If that, if that pinfall would have happened there, I mean, listen, Kenny King would have lost his title. And between these three, it's been often a game of can you top this? Look at this. Floats over after the suplex. Another near fall there. Christian York game here looking for the win. York, yeah, you mentioned it, Taz. He is a veteran. He was actually on the first ever TNA broadcast. And now in front of the largest crowd, but he's in trouble now. Oh, just what the X Division is all about. The total nonstop action. Highlighted by that knife edge chop to the chest of York, who fights back out of the corner against the champ, Kenny King. And Christian York really has been the more successful of the three when it comes to striking high impact blows in this matchup. Well, he can be as successful as he wants. He's not the X Division champion yet. Kenny King is. Well, in my opinion, you can't compare success rate when you have these two men. That's the way I see it. Kenny King's the champ. Scooping a slam there by Kenny King. And yeah, I'll give him credit. He's a fighting champ. He said he won the best here at lockdown, and he got it. Defending against two tough challengers. The hell is this now? What's Ion right, doing? Look out, look out. Whoa! Look at that, right into the cover, though. On York, a Hurricane Rana, and almost like a splash onto Christian York. What a combination move there by Ion. All in one fluid movement. You're right, snapped it off, out of the corner, off the top, and then straight down into the pin. Now a suplex by one of the challengers here. Zima perhaps thinking it's the beginning the end. Springboard again, beautiful moonsault, perfectly executed, hook of the leg. That was another potential costly 
situation there for the exhibition well, champ because yeah. he couldn't come in to make the save there. Taz. Correct. Kenny King not in the ring, not able to break anything up, but that was again tremendous athleticism by Zima Aya, but here's King now. Got control here. This is the type of action that has been synonymous with the X Division since the dawning of TNA Wrestling. So fitting that it kicks off things here as part of our biggest event in history. Another big shot there by Christian York. Man, he's been physical. Yeah, Christian York's got something in mind. Kenny kicks him oh, Got a leg drop. Hit its mark. Watch this. Pin a tap. How about the arm? York. How about the arm under the rope? Ref, wake up. Let's go. Come on. Kenny King grabbed the rope for good measure as well. Gets the rope break. But a smart move there, you gotta believe, for Christian York attacking the neck after that crash and burn we saw from Kenny King earlier in this matchup. Christian York knows what he's doing. To my point, I make points and they're valid. We've established that, haven't we, Mike? Yes, sir. Thank you. This is gonna be a fun night. It's good to be here. Elevates Ion up and over to the outside. Again, nobody able to really sustain wow. a long advantage. Just stopped him down and now the baseball slide to the outside. I'll tell you what, man, Zima Ion is moving. That was after he kicked Christian York right in the head. Come here, watch this. DT dropped him on his head. Could have a new champ right now. That's one of Ion's favorites just absolutely spikes him vertical down with that DDT and the frustration sets in. He thought he had it. Well, it's pretty obvious this match can go either way anyway. And it's a good chance you might crown a new X Division champ. Because Kenny King not looking too good right about now here. Yeah, this kind of match, we documented the odds not in his favor, but trying to divide and conquer now. Big shot to Ion on the outside. What a great championship matchup, of course, later on. The knockouts, oh. title, tag team titles, and world heavyweight title on the line. Springboard again, oh. right up on that unforgiving ramp. Yeah, no give out on the entrance ramp as Kenny King unleashes the leg drop, and you can see Kenny King's also paying the price. Well, you'll feel that right in, into your tailbone, and that's exactly what happened to Kenny King. It looks like Christian's gonna take advantage. Trying to steal one here from him, wow. Yeah, Kenny King, that could just send shots all the way up your spine. A type of impact on the tailbone. See if he's able to shake it off as this match wears on. Both men out of the clinch here, trying to get the superior position. What a knee like lift, just almost lifted him off the canvas. Well, you could hear the, the physicality of flesh, nailing flesh, and the impact that was just given out there by both these men, but Kenny King now in the driver's seat. That might have taken the win right out of Christian York. What's Kenny King thinking here? Oh my goodness. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell? Whoa! Far away slam, power bomb in stereo. Here we go. York's got him. Oh. Wow, good job right there. Hold on. Off the first one, did get it, it goes for the second, but a pair of near falls there. Have to love the persistence of Christian York going from one man to the other. Doesn't matter who you beat, if you get that pin or submission, you're going to become champion or keep that title. Christian York at this point in the matchup as it goes into deep water, he seems to be the freshest of the three. Got to capitalize though. Look out, oh. big time Bulldog. Full speed into the Christian York clothesline. Now, the champ gonna take over. Uh-oh, look at first. Caught. Yeah, nice up to that back suplex by Christian York. Great counter. counter. Yeah, yeah, trapped him. Oh, wow, look out. Mood swing, new champ, no. Woo, that was close. Kenny King, he's, he's got to try to string some moves together here. Get a victory and get the hell out of here if he can. Looking for that capoeira style kick, but eats one in his own right. The countering ability of Christian York thus far. Ion raking the back now, pulling out all the stops. This thing's getting personal. Getting so much pride on the line here. Title on the line. High stakes opening contest here at Lockdown. And now York and King thought they were going to work in tandem. Oh! Got him. Oh. 
Now Zima on top of York. Zima, Zima eye on showing that tenacity right there. It did not pay off, but a hell of an effort. Tell you what, that's what the X Division all about. We're seeing stuff we have never seen before tonight in this matchup. These three continue to battle. Bring everything oh, in there. Oh, 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 knockout oh, shot. Oh my god. What a stiff kick in the corner by York. It rocks Zima Ion. And Ion's defenseless in the corner. Big double stomp. Oh. It rolls through. Into the dreamscape on the champ. Got him hooked, thinking mood swing. Oh, but Kenny King's got different ideas. Hits him with those shotgun knees. Come on, Kenny, come on, Kenny. Boom! Oh. And these guys are throwing serious heat here tonight. Full force, shot to the back of the head for Ion. Now, Kenny's got York exactly where he wants him. Yep. Oh, what a roll through counter to the Royal Flush. And inches away again from becoming a new champ. History almost made. Great scouting job by Christian York to counter the move. Uh-oh, back again. Oh, deck was stacked that time. Royal Flush, hook of the leg, and the champ retains. Your winner is still X Division champion, Kenny King. Gotta admit, gentlemen, that is a pretty damn uh -huh. impressive uh -huh. title defense. Uh -huh. You're damn right. You're damn right. Another right. right. day at the office for the X Division champion, Kenny King. Not a bad effort by the other two men. Hell of a match for sure. All right, we are going to relive some of the action, and my oh my, there was a <laughs> ton of it. It was definitely, you know, look, the X Division is at stake here, and right there, the X Division champion almost got beheaded. And Zima Ion again showing that amazing athleticism. Look, big stakes here. Title opportunity for one of these three men, or for King to retain. So they really left it all out in the ring. All three of these men did. At the end of the day, Kenny King remains champion. What a town defense, JB take it away. Oh, we're gonna stay on the champ, he needs that glory shot. He needs the bright light. I was gonna say, that's definitely not JB. <laughs> no. All right, but now JB standing by in the back as lockdown rages on. Thank you very much, guys. We are off and rolling here at Lockdown. We'd like to thank all the great fans joining us tonight, not only here at the Alamo Dome, around the world on pay-per-view. And, of course, we are reading your feedback right now. Hashtag Lockdown on Twitter. And, of course, reading your Facebook comments as well. Joining me now at this time, the man who faces Joey Ryan tonight here at Lockdown in the Alamo Dome. Joseph Park, are you ready? <sighs> JB, I, I think I'm ready. I'll tell you what, you know, some are calling it the matchup of Sleaze versus Legal Ease, and Jeremy, I'm, I'm ready for this whole thing, but I gotta tell you, I've been down, the boys have been downright mean and nasty this weekend, ripping me. I needed a rental car, and they sent me to the Alamo, but not the one with the cars in it, JB. And, but they had the best churros, the best churros ever. <laughs> You know what, man, you're right, the boys are jerks. A lot of them are real jerks, but Dixie Carter was just asking where you were. She's looking for you. She wants to wish you luck you in know. your big match. Bro. Where's she at? She's in catering. I know where catering is. Big plate of pasta? I yeah. She's catering. Catering. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Nerd. No, you see, JB, tonight's not about Joseph Park. And speaking of churros, tonight's not about Churro Guerrero or Juan Hernandez. And tonight's not even about A-double or B-Roo, JB. Tonight is about the Saints of SoCal, the Kings of California, the Golden State Greats. Tonight is about bad influence. And tonight, Jeremiah, we become the world tag team champions of the world again, again, again. <laughs> and JB, I think you guys have got the wrong impression about bad influence. Yeah, we're always quick with a joke or a lot of your smoke, but we're not jokes. And we're tired of being disrespected. Disrespected by Dixie and this company, disrespected by these ass bag fans, and disrespected by Chavo and Sean and Bobby Roode and Austin Aries. Those tag belts are the most important thing in our lives. And tonight, we walk to that ring, we drop you all like Verizon Wireless. We hold the belts high above our heads and prove that we are the best tag team in the business. Three syllables of awesome, two planets worth of great, and one tag team that rules them all. The bad influence of TNA.
Daniels and Kazarian certainly not lacking confidence. They battle for the tag team titles later on. They commented that they're the kings of California. Here comes another California native from the West Coast, Joey Ryan. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Chrissy Hemi better be careful when the, you know, Mr. Sleeves himself, Jordan Ryan, gets in there. Well, you're right. Sleeves factor just went through the roof. It's a hell of a long way up to the roof here at the Alamo Dome. And his opponent from Chicago, Illinois, Joseph Park. I mean, do we really have to have Joseph Park even around? I mean, if we need an attorney, we won't call him. But why is he here? Why? Why do we have to have this man in the ring competing? What? Well, he's coming off of two straight victories. He's undefeated on Impact Wrestling episodes. Yeah, two matches. Trying to get the W, as the boys say, on pay-per-view tonight. The W. Okay, gotcha. Well, I like Joey Ryan's ch Okay, I like Joey Ryan's chances. That's what I was about to say. It looks like uh, Illegal Ease is a little disgusted by the King of Sleeves. Oiling up. He never leaves home without it. Might be hard to get a hold on Joey Ryan now. How do you know? He that's told good, me so. That's actually a good point. You see the guy all up, you get all nuts. It's a little weird. Been a while since we've seen Joey Ryan. Joseph. You know, they say everything is bigger in Texas. And judging by your gut and all the fat people in the audience tonight, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's true. Joseph, that's called evidence. And you know what else is big about you? And I know you're learning insider terms, so pay close attention. But just like everybody here, Joseph, you are a big mark. And you belong sitting in the audience more than you do in the ring with me. But you know something? Joey Ryan has the size advantage where it counts. Because as you're about to find out, Joseph, size matters. Yep, yep. Hold on for a second. I just want to say something real quick. San Antonio rocks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. See, I, I went to Riverwalk. I went to Riverwalk. I even sang karaoke. And this place rocks, Joey Ryan. That's it, rock, everybody. He's got something in common with you, Todd. Karaoke. Yeah. He did yeah. a hell of a job. He's saying I did it my way. But Joey Ryan now just hits him from behind. Glasses go flying. Joey Ryan, the king of sleaze, takes the early advantage. What an unorthodox matchup this looks to be. Well, you're not kidding. And when Joey Ryan says size matters, if he's talking about height and weight, well, he really is at a disadvantage uh, against Joseph Park here. Well, little Johnson and Johnson. Hopefully it's not the other Johnson. <laughs> he just slimed it. Man, whoa, hold on now. Joseph Park was in hot pursuit. His arms are moving faster than his legs. It's all fun and games, so you get some baby oil in the eye. Park found a way to get a hold of him, though. Anyway, he's got it by the hair, but oh, Joey Ryan. He's a veteran. He knows to take the shortcuts in there. Oh, look out. Where the hell did that come from? Wow. Yeah, come to see a nightmare Danny Davis. Some of the tutelage fundamentally sound. What a shot. I don't know if that was an arm drag or if it just fell and grabbed him by accident. I think Danny Davis is doing a great job as the newest gut check judge. Oh, that's nice, Mike. That's, that's really high class of you. I just thought I'd point that out. Did it did terrific work. No. Thursday night on Impact Wrestling. Yeah, no love for you, brother. Nice counter there by Joey Ryan. It was a, oh, oh well, wow. that's running into a brick wall. Kinda. Well, a wet wall. But, uh, well, if you're Joey Ryan, you really gotta try to just stay away from the size, that big body though. Just like that. Yeah, exactly, of, jo of uh, Joseph Park. Oh, that's it, boy. take him off his feet. 
It's all over now, buddy. Yeah, oh. if you're Joey Ryan, that's the perfect move. Get that big man down and pound away. Into a standing mount. Yeah. Joey would know all about that. And was raining down the right hands again. Oh, this guy's just disgusting. Give me a break. This is how kind of Joey Ryan just expresses himself. You know, when he first came in here in Impact Wrestling, I couldn't stand the sight of Joey. I'll tell you what, he's kind of growing on me like a wart. Oh! You really have had a change of heart in many situations over the last month or two, haven't you? Sometimes people change, Mike. I see that. Sometimes people change. They're not machines. I have emotions and feelings like everyone else. Mr. Sensitive himself. And if you touch me, I'm Teflon, you'll be sued. But right now, Joey Ryan's just going to town and doing whatever he wants here to pop. Looking for the cover here. Look at this nonchalant cover. Great crowd, largest in TNA wrestling history, solidly behind Joseph Park, trying to rally him back into this one. I don't know what his field of vision is. He's had that baby oil rubbed in his face two or three times now. That's the problem for Joseph Park. Has that big size advantage, can't exploit it because his vision has been hampered by Ryan oh, repeatedly and again. Looks like sandpaper, a little motorboat. Excuse me? Wow. What the hell are you talking about? I don't know, but he sure knows all the personal Motor terms. Motor sandpaper? What, what, what is your deal, dude? <laughs> Freaky! It's been a while since we've seen Joey Ryan here, but I heard he's been busy with his other career up in the San Fernando Valley. Something Doing tells some me you know. Why don't you invite everyone? Now, jeez. Well, right now, Joseph Park, he's in a world of hurt. He's out of his league. Joey Ryan really disrespect him, saying he has no business in that ring. Should be sitting on the outside with the crowd here. There we go. Here goes Joey. Joey's going to fly, baby. He does indeed, and he takes the big man down with the missile drop kick. But he's got to take advantage here, Taz. He got the big guy off a of vertical base. Uh, he could take his time. And oh, look, listen. Yo, the lawyer's got no offense. Look at this. Just cover him, beat him. Almost beat him. Yeah, he's going to take his time. There's no reason to rush through it if you're Joey Ryan. Got this match in a bag, buddy. In a bag, I say. Body bag. All right, I knew not that yet, was coming. Yet. That might happen eventually. Trying to behave out here. Now, when you're talking, you're not behaving. <laughs> but right now, you see what's about to happen. Oh, 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 look out! Oh, man, that hurts. Joseph Pucks along is running a special <laughs> free Brazilian waxing. Oh! Wedgie there by Park. It actually kind of speaks for itself here, folks. It sure does. Oh! Oh, Joey Ryan might like that. I don't know. The crowd certainly loves this offense by Park. Full head of steam by the big man. Nowhere to go but down for Joey Ryan. Oh, look at look. Joseph Park, he's got that. Crazy look in his eyes. Not gonna go high risk here, is he? He's just overweight and crazy. High risk. Crowd wants him to do well, it. Medium risk. This guy's gonna. This guy can't even walk with a oh, Trying to formulate that closing argument, but an objection by Joey Ryan. Oh my God. Wow. Can you? Can, do you have any? More? I don't even know what to say to that. But well, Joseph Park missed the splash. Basically, that's what happened, folks. That's what I think uh, Todd tried to say. I had a little sidebar with Joseph Park earlier. He oh, said that he, God. you know, is, uh... Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Calls out the closing oh, argument. Right, oh, oh. He's got... Joe Ryan's got him. Yeah, can he get Big Joseph down? Oh! oh! Right, right bolt just went off. Robert Straight down. Bitch. Drop down. Your winner, Joseph Park. Oh, my God. Poor Joey Ryan. That's got to be like a small Fiat falling on your chest. That sucks. Joey Ryan might just be a grease spot in the middle of the canvas. And look at Joseph. Joseph Park. He is just so ecstatic. Hell yeah. This guy's acting like he won the Stanley Cup or something. Stanley Irving Cup. What a victory there by Park. Yep, picked up the W. Let's relive it. Right there, Joey went for the sunset flip. That good balance, well, kind of good to Joseph, and then we talk about a mustache ride. Oh, it's like a sternum buster. Holy cow. Look at all he's like, oh, I want it. I don't even know. He obviously didn't mean it, but he just fell on the guy. 
All right, take a walk now, Joseph. Hopefully we never First see First ever pay-per-view win Absolutely. for Joseph Park. Tonight at Lockdown. Great, I'll file it under who gives or you know what. How's that sound, all right? Tons of momentum for Park, but coming up later tonight, who will win our World Heavyweight title match inside the confines of the steel cage? We want to hear from you. Vote now on Facebook.com slash Impact Wrestling and voice your opinion. All right, and now we take a look earlier today. The arrival of the champion, the charismatic Enigma Jeff Hardy in the house. What a fighting champ he's been. He puts the gold up on the line yet again tonight against Bully Ray in the cage. Cannot wait. Baby, this is your destiny. You've trained so hard for this and gosh, everything that we dreamt about is coming true. We got married. My dad loves you. He's behind you. I love you. I just know that you're going to walk out of there the world Brooke, champion. I get it. I get it. You're excited. I, and I appreciate that you're proud of me, and I love you also. But you don't understand? I'm nervous. I want to make you proud. I want to make your dad proud. For the first time in my career, I want to be proud. But oh my, this, is, this is a first for me. I've never been in this. <clears throat> hey, Dad. What's, up, What's going on, man? How you doing? Just How you good. feeling? I'm good. Bro, okay. Give me a second, please. Okay. All right. I'll see you later. Okay. I'll see you out there. Okay. Thanks. Sit down. All right, brother, here's the deal. Business first. As a general manager, tonight is a pivotal point for us. This good little company now has a chance to go on to greatness from this moment forward. Nothing against Jeff Hardy. He's been great for the moment. He's been great for the run. And I'm not saying that he can't go on and, and, and launch us. But I'm gonna tell you something I've never said before. There's something about you. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something really, really special about you. There's something, some type of an energy, something that just comes at me so strong when I'm around you that I think you're our launch point. I think I'm betting on you to win tonight. I'm betting on you to take us on to greatness. And as a world's heavyweight champion, this company will never be stopped again. And yes, I want a son-in-law to be the world's heavyweight champion. But there's more to it than that for me. I've seen what you've done with my daughter. You put a spark, you put that light back in her eyes. Her, her spirit's alive again. I mean, my God, after the crap I put her through on a personal level, the divorce, my family being destroyed, to see her happy again and knowing that you're responsible for that, I can't thank you enough. You're my family, and I love you like my own son now. So I want you to go out there, and I want you to do a couple things. Number one, I want you to win the World Heavyweight title because I'm jealous. I wish it could be me, but now I have a chance to live through you again. I get to be part of this business because of you again. The belt's coming home to our family. And the other thing is, before I had my shot, just like you have your shot today, Andre the Giant pulled me aside and he said, boss, whether you win or lose out there, make sure no matter what happens that they remember you as long as they live. And he meant everybody that watches wrestling, everybody that knows the name Hogan, Andre, all the names, this is your chance tonight to go out there, win or lose, and yes, I want you to win, but no matter what happens, make sure when this night is over, they remember you as long as they live, brother. That's what I want you to do. That's an, uh, that's an awesome story, man. Let's do this, man. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm with you all the way. I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna. you're gonna. Do me a favor. <laughs> yeah, help me Come out. on. Oh, thank you. And listen, as far as making them remember me, I promise you, I will. Thank you. I'll see you out there. I love you, brother. I love you, too. I'll be there. Thank you very much. I'm with you all the way, man.
World Heavyweight title on the line later tonight, but right now it's time for our second championship match of the night, the knockouts title on the line. The following contest scheduled for one fall is for the knockouts championship. Introducing first from Toronto, Canada, Gail Kim. Challenger, the original knockout, the first ever knockout champion the longest reigning knockout champion in company history. Seven months she held the title. She has been knockout champ on two occasions and looking to make it number three right now. She has been more aggressive than ever. Might just be her time. I gotta say, I'm still a little taken aback by those comments made by Hulk Hogan the Bully Ray. What do you mean? Well, it was, it was very powerful. Okay, it was very, very powerful. And from the heart? Oh, well, yeah, it was from the heart. I'll give Hogan that. And talk about trying to motivate his son in law and freaking living vicariously through the guy and setting the man up to become champion. What is it? It's a load of BS. What are you bothered about that for? And her opponent from the Big Apple. saw anybody try to motivate someone the way Hogan did, and Bully being so receptive, to turn my stomach. That's it, that's all I have to say about it. Now, motivation doesn't get any bigger than that, literally. Using the iconic words of the eighth wonder of the world, Andre the Giant himself. Something that spurred the Hulkster on the championship goal. Will it do it to Bully Ray tonight? But speaking of titles, Velvet Sky, the current reigning defending knockouts champ, has said that 2013 will be her year. So far, so good. Will it continue tonight? Velvet said that when she returned to TNA and Impact Wrestling in December of last year. Then it was last month in London, England on Impact Wrestling, where Velvet Sky became a two-time knockout champion. One week later, she successfully retained in her first title defense against Tara. Tonight, another title defense against the challenger, Gail Kim. Bell sounds, and here we go, Bataz. In the world of wrestling, the world of sports, momentum. Such a key factor as Velvet rolls her up early, just last week on Impact, and another inside cradle here. Uh, uh, Gail Kim got a pinfall victory in tag team action over the champ. Trying to talk about the momentum of Gail Kim maybe leading towards becoming knockouts champion. That's that what you're is, saying? That is correct. That's kind of what I'm saying for you, correct? Well, I would agree with that. I think that Gail Kim definitely has a great opportunity here, obviously, to become knockouts champ. I actually think she, and I hope she, is the knockouts champ by the time this match ends. How's that? These two have quite a history when it comes to battling for the Knockouts Championship at our pay-per-view events. 2011 turning point, Gale defeated Velvet Sky to win the Knockouts Championship, and might get it right here again. No, just a two count. Reversal the other way, though, and another near fall. And then last year, these two wrestled at lockdown, in the cage, and Gale oh. was outside interference. Beautiful head scissors take down there by the champion, trying to quicken the pace. Yeah, Velvet went into Gale, was not defending her, or not protecting her face, I should say, and Gale with a nice back elbow, shut down. Whoa, wow, maybe not. Nice quick, swinging neck breaker there, hooks both legs this time, and only comes up with a two count. Well, says knockouts official, Taryn Terrell. You can see that Velvet has that sense of urgency to try and gain a victory quick to retain the title. I think that's smart of Velvet Scott. Yeah, went for notable. Numerous, multiple, yes, multiple, 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 multiple numerous multiple, is what multiple, I was going for. Multiple. Pin attempts in the opening minutes. Numerous, multiple, got it. Same difference. Oh, look out here! Whoa! First, the full speed drop kick in the ring. Then from the apron, Velvet goes flying and crashes right on top of Gale. Nowhere to run for Gale Kim. Velvet Sky has oh. really been aggressive from the get-go, but gets run right back into that post. Her spine and her tailbone, meaning Velvet, Driven hard into that steel post, and you know Gal, <laughs> my girl, she definitely will capitalize now. Here we go, man. Oh, I get it, it right now. Gail Kim had her stacked up. 
Well, Gale thinks that Taryn Terrell a little slow on the draw right there, our referee. Oh, and there's been controversy as of late between Gail Kim and Taryn Terrell, the knockouts official. Gail pointed it out when she joined us at the broadcast table recently on Impact Wrestling. I think it started back at Genesis, followed up also on Impact Wrestling, right, Todd? Yeah, absolutely, you're right. And another wide open shot there by Gail Kim he has really had a gripe about the officiating. Went so far to say that they even have a blonde bias, Taryn Terrell and Velvet Sky and that Terrell was instrumental in helping her win the title. Well, I agree with Gail Kim on that assessment of, of the refereeing in the blunts. Well, that high round kick right there, right to the midsection, or the back section of the midsection. Little anatomy lesson there. Oh, whoa! Thought she was going to drop back. Maybe Samoan drop, but just dumped her unceremoniously. Look at the confidence of Gail Kim. Look at her. She's got it here. What? Oh. Forward hand in the cookie jar to Gail and Taryn Terrell. Getting all over. She's looking for the added leverage there. Had her hand on the rope. Official all over it. Now on her with the count again. Well, if you're Taryn Terrell, you need to be assertive. You got to lay down the law and maintain order in the ring. It's exactly what she's doing to Gail Kim. Yeah, I understand that, Mike, but the referee shouldn't be interfering with the competitor while they're competing. What do you mean? Uh, if you're doing right. something illegal, she wasn't really doing nothing. Right there, she was, Gail was doing something illegal. But prior to that, it seemed like Taryn was just yelling at her. Maybe it's that time of month. I don't know. <laughs> so the best color analyst in the business. Look out. Hook of the leg again by damn Gail right. Kim. You're damn right, and you're welcome for the rub. But anyway, right now, you just see the eyeballs of Taryn. They were all over. Taryn Terrell was looking at Gail Kim. Like, I got my eye on you, and I don't think Gail gives a hoot. And I did say hoot. Oh, yeah, I can make it sound cool. Uh oh. Out here. Oh, wow! What a counter! Just pulled the rug out from under her there. Down to the basement. What a drop. Just, but not able to capitalize. Not able to go into the cover. This might cost the knockouts champ. I mean, if Velvet was able to capitalize, she might regain her title. That was very impactful. She just splatted Gail Kim. First ever knockouts champ charges in, but now full head of steam the other way. Series of clotheslines by the knockouts champion in a back elbow. Champ's offense, it's real crisp here against Gail Kim, and Gail telegraphed the back body. Costa with the kick, all oh, the oh. face pin. Nice bulldog takedown there. Drove her down face first yet again. Oh, look at this. Oh, Velvet's first. got it. She's got this. Ooh, that was close. Nice to see Gail able to pop her shoulder up, prevent losing this match here. Velvet Sky digging deep into the offensive playbook here. I don't think I've seen her use that reverse DDT before. Oh, oh. What the hell happened? It was Gail Kim holding onto the referee, Taryn Terrell, oh, she's maintaining her balance. She's and then Potter, Potter with the eat defeat. Yeah, out of that, Mike, you're right. She got her with the eat defeat, and now it's a counter. Oh, oh, new champion almost crowned here in San Antonio. That might have been a three count. I don't know, fellas. That looked pretty. Oh, not even close. Come on, I don't know. That looked pretty good. And Gail's not happy. Oh, be careful, Gail. Don't put your hands on the official. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Whoa. Well, oh, she's got to put her in place. I don't play Gail. Hey, get her hands it. on an official. Oh, oh, oh. Do that to me for you. Talking about putting your hands on an official there. Just a blatant slap. That might have been a little too far. thinking about Oh, 
Well, there was first physical involvement on the part of Gail Kim towards the referee, Taryn Terrell. Taryn thought about the disqualification, but then decided, I'll handle it myself, and that's exactly what she did. That was a little bit, that was a little too much. I don't know, in my opinion, I think referee Taryn Terrell went a little too far. Yes, yeah, okay, Gail, she slapped her a little bit in the face. She shouldn't have done that. I understand that, but geez, no spear her, girl. All right, we go back down and see how it all went down. Oh, yeah, she was a grazing slap. Grazing? I don't know. Nothing grazing about that, though. Oh, you're right about that. Yeah, well, see hair flying, all sorts of stuff going on. Got a lot of, I think this, this was crazy. And then Velvet, well, she took advantage of the opportunity and regains her knockouts title. A lot of insane estrogen going on in that match, folks. Wild title defla defense there by Velvet Sky. Unbelievable. Still the knockouts champion, Velvet Sky, but how about that? Standing by in the back, here's JB. Thank you very much, guys, and a wild ending to that one. Velvet Sky remains knockouts champion. Coming up next here at Lockdown, it's bro versus bro. My guest at this time, Robbie E taking on Big Rob Terry. Tonight's the night, JB. Tonight is the night, bro. Robbie E finally proves that Big Rob was always better than Bigger Rob, bro. Robbie T, I got your VIP, bro. I got your girls, bro. I got you on the list, bro. And what do you do for me? You hold me down for two years, you oversized hamster. Tonight, Robbie T, let me say this slow. So y'all Texans understand. My former bro, I'm gonna make my hoe. Oh! <laughs>
And his opponent, also from the New Jersey Shore, taking a back seat as the bouncer. And yeah, big Robbie T is out of his shell. And Robbie E, Robbie E's on his bicycle. Also got a big shell. That's gigantic. Bigger Rob. Be biggest Rob. You see Robbie, Robbie E right now tell him, slow down, let's let the match start the right way. There's no reason to get crazy. Stalling tactics by Robbie E, and I can't blame him. Robbie T has been scary intense lately. That's all Robbie T is about, being intense. Being large, massive, violent. And Mike, you talked about him not being in the shadow. He really started to gain that confidence. You think back to the bro off. And then there was the recent blow up in Robbie T's homeland of the United Kingdom, where Robbie E was denigrating the locals. Alliance then really went south. History on Impact Wrestling when Robbie well, sort of pretended, Robbie E pretended to restore the friendship and then nailed him in the head with that big VIP sign. Yeah, really tried to suck him in there, but he paid for it. Calling for a timeout, this match is started. Oh, yeah, it's a little early for a timeout. I guess you might want to wait for that, but yeah, I understand what Robbie E's trying to do. He's just trying to we'll get Robbie T to just calm down. He's even apologizing. He's a gentleman, this Robbie Sorry. I heard him say sorry. He's a gentleman. Don't be fooled by the Never heard that word used to describe him before. Don't be fooled by the flamboyant boy and clothing. Look, he's trying to hug him. He's hugging it out, guys. Let's hug it out, bro. Haven't we seen where this reconciling between the two is not going to work? Well, Robbie T doesn't seem too receptive to hugging it out. Yeah, not mutual here in the uh, in the hug out attempt. Oh. Just shrugs him off the power of Robbie T. So back to the drawing board for Robbie here. A lot went wrong here for Robbie T. Let's be honest. Listen, bye bye. You know, these this issues with him and Robbie E. Robbie E no longer gonna give Robbie T any training advice. That's gonna happen. Now, he's not gonna give Robbie T any more tri nutritional advice. He's not even letting Robbie T room with him anymore. He's got just a share a room. He kicked Robbie T out of the room. That's what I heard. Wow. Yeah. Ah, yeah you got him now, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Robbie E holding on to that side him. headlock. Is that what he's doing? Well, trying to. Dear life, I don't know what this is. One hand, look at that, just twist it out. Almost into a top wrist lock, per se. Oh. Takes him down with one hand, wrist control. Well, I mean, Robbie T needs to, he need, does need to give Robbie a little room. I mean, come on, back him up, ref. Let's see. Just trying to have an amateur wrestling style match. Robbie, he going for a single leg takedown. Doesn't really, not gonna get the takedown. Oh, oh what a gut wrench. Shoot the single, probably not. The best of options there for Robbie E. Didn't work out there, but now gonna have to use his quickness. That might be the answer, but oh! Uh, maybe not. Bigger Rob has an answer for the quickness. Elevated high into the air, and now he's got, he's got Robbie E in his sights. Oh! Yeah, he almost caught an early flight back to Jersey there. Now going downstairs, upstairs, trying to pepper him with strikes. Well, he sees the opening right there in that massive deltoid that ran into the turnbuckle. Robbie E should have kept on. Uh oh. Robbie T's got a hold of him now, but trying to break that grip. Good Easier luck. said than done. You're not kidding, Taz. God, these chops are nasty, but to no effect. No effect on Robbie T. Hey, what? I mean, Robbie, he, he has to have a better game plan, because the game plan he currently has been using sucks. What do you suggest? I don't know. Uh, I really don't thought. want to tell you. No, really, what are you going to do against this guy? <laughs> Run. He's gigantic. That's my point. You know, you got to just uh, utilize your speed if you can and Quick try drop. and steal one. And the power, just not even barely a one count there. After he took the big man down, chopped him down, went to the knee, then the short drop kick, and now trying to grab a hold of the arm. Bigger Rob has had success in the past as a singles competitor. 2010, he was the global champion a title that was renamed the TV Championship, now in the possession of Devon from Aces and Eights. 
global. I should know some guys who worked for them back in the day. Nothing to do with but that. But right now, right now you see Robbie E hanging on here to the massive head and neck. Trying to get those hooks Robbie back in. Yeah, He's well. got his back, maybe trying to wear him out, get him back down on the mat. Ah! The... Robbie E, former television champion in his own right, Mike. And wearing down the big man. You talk about what game plan that Robbie E should employ. I think we finally found a successful one. Referee checking to see how close that is to a choke. Sometimes, no matter how big a guy is, you get a good choke on him. You choke him out, it's done. This is this right here. We're seeing it. This rear naked here. And if he could try to get great part in the body, get the hooks in of sorts, that would help the strength of the choke. Trying to cut off that flow of oxygen to the brain and that big body of Robbie T. It needs it needs to be fed a whole yeah, lot of well, oxygen. Well, sometimes the bigger the neck, the easier it is to put a choke on a guy because there's more circumference to work with. And that's why I'm the best cuddle analyst in the business, Todd. For your little wise ass comment before. Anyway, I oh, digress. I thought he was very sincere, uh, Pat. I, 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 I was. I, I right. said I digress. That means we're moving on. Let's do it. Counter there by Robbie. E. Tries Whoa. to quicken the pace again, but he gets caught like a baby there. Big baby. But slides out the back door. Ah, oh, just what a shot. Offense of Robbie T. It's not flashy, but it sure as hell is effective. Oh my God, look at the power here. Up. Wow. Big scoop and a slam there. Look at the Drove size it. of this guy's back. It's even bigger than your back, Todd. Huge. I think he's got me beat by quite a bit there, Taz, but thanks. I don't know, if you counter my love handles, maybe I got a shot. Wait a minute. Oh, Robbie E, he kind of just fell into the guy. Oh my God, again, the big power right here of Robbie T. Whoa! God! Just hoisted him I into that about spine it. Done. Done. Your winner, Robbie T. I kind of feel bad for Robbie E on that whole, uh, you know, he you love being friends with Robbie T. No more, and he gets splatted like that. I feel bad for Robbie. Yeah, take that, bro. What a high impact move, Taz. Let's take another look at it. You just can't deal with the power. Robbie, even, even though Robbie's a quality human being, in my opinion, real Jersey guy, Northeast guy, he got splatted there. Couldn't deal with the power and spread of Robbie T. And Robbie E told me earlier today, the reason why this guy is this big is because of him, Robbie E. Told me, told me all his training you know, techniques, that's what he told me. All right, standing by yet again in the back. Take it away, JB. Thank you very much, guys. Coming up next here in Lockdown, it is a three-way matchup, three teams involved for the World Tag Team Championship. And joining me now at this time, one half of the World Tag Team Champions, Austin Aries. Where's your partner? Where's my partner, Jeremy Borash, asking me the same question everybody's been asking me for the last two weeks. Everywhere I go, every time I turn on my social media, people want to know, where's Bobby Roode at? Where's your tag team partner? What are you going to do at lockdown if Bobby Roode's not there? Well, people, did you forget who I am? I'm Austin Aries. I am the common denominator of greatness. And for the last two weeks, I've proven I don't need Bobby Roode. I don't need Bobby Roode to get the job done. I don't need Bobby Roode to keep the World Tag Team Championships. Everybody knows I can walk out there tonight and defeat all four of my opponents all by myself. But luckily for me, <laughs> that's not gonna be necessary. You miss me? <laughs> All right, the World Tag Team title match is next here at Lockdown. And here we go. Time for the tag team titles to be on the line. The champs defend against two former championship teams. This is going to be a good one. Introducing first the team of Hernandez and Chavo Guerrero. You guys believe in a little home cooking? A little home field advantage? Oh, yeah. 
great reception here in San Antonio for two of the Texas favorite sons, Chavo and Hernandez, the former champs. A whole lot of Guerrero family history here, isn't there, Mike? No question about that. And Guerrero and Hernandez, they won the tag team titles back in Bound for Glory in a three-way match. Question is, Lightning gonna strike twice? Texas. I can't wait to get on a plane and get the hell out of this place. Got an early flight? Yeah, a little bit. That Chavo, he's such a ham. He's soaking this thing up. Come on, get focused, Chavo. Huh? What are you doing? I said you shouldn't. That's what I said. I didn't say and you I just gonna. said that we would. Uh, I, I'm not trying to be argumentative, Mike. It's not about no, you and I. Your, that's not your style. No, I'm just trying to say, don't say that. That's all. It doesn't make sense. My opinion, and my opinion is correct. And your silence speaks volumes. Oh, no. I'm just taking it all in. Here we see it. Oh, that's what that's called. <laughs> Tag team titles. That's what it's all about in this one. Already have had some great championship action here tonight on lockdown. Both Kenny King, X Division champ, and Velvet Sky retain. Will history be made here tonight with the World Tag Team titles on the line? Let's here. be honest, guys. When it comes to tag team wrestling, you are looking at three of the greatest tag teams in the world today. This is the cream of the crop when it comes to tag team wrestling in the entire Completely disagree. Indus Completely disagree. Well, All listen, right. Bob, if you want, Go ahead. Want, you want to take, you want to take Sergeant at Arms and Mason's H. Devon and put him in there, put him, put him in there with any member of Aces and H's. Bitch, with B Garrett Bischoff or, or with maybe Wes Briscoe? Yeah. You, you think they're right. a good team? How many times Devon and Garrett Bischoff and Devon and Wes Briscoe, how many times have they been tag team champs? They don't need to be. They get it done without holding championships. Uh -huh. That's what we're about. Okay. <laughs> I told you. Revisionist history. All right, it's gonna be Chavo starting things off with Bobby Roode. Let's break it down. Much like that X Division match earlier on, first person to score a pinfall or submission will gain the victory for their team and the tag team title. So the champs really have their backs against the wall. Well, it looks like it's gonna be Daniels starting off against, well, the home field advantage guy, Chavo Guerrero. Like today was making a big deal. It was Chavo Guerrero from Texas. And okay. Hernandez as well. Yeah, I know. I heard you. I heard Those you 10 times. Those at home. Now bring it forward. Come on forward. Oof. Was a great reception for the hometown boys. That's got to really urge them on. See if it'll be enough. Daniel's in control currently. He certainly has been impressive as of late. Daniels, oh, he's always impressive. Are you kidding me? Smooth like butter, baby. Smooth like butter. 
Recipient of a big backdrop there and a big double shot. A little human ping pong here by the former champs. That was nice that Supermax got involved, right? That was nice. He just chopped him. Neither you or Tanae are screaming and yelling, why did he cheat? Why did he cheat? Why did he do that? I didn't hear you guys saying that. It's tag team wrestling. Oh, give it a rest. They got five seconds uh, to work with right now. That's nice. Too. Double team. Wow. Oh, excuse me. You got to be careful. You can't. Oh, oh. man. Sending them south of the border there. Oh, welcome back, Bobby Roode. Holy yambag Yahtzee right there. Big man oh. gets fired in. And then back to Chavo for the oh. drop kick. Oh. And this might be their night. They're feeling it. They got that hometown advantage, as you mentioned. And they are exploiting it right now, Mike. Standing tall, Supermax Hernandez, Chavo Guerrero Jr. And they have absolutely dominated in the opening bell. Oh, talk about being brought in the hard way. I mean, do they feel bad at all that Daniel has been getting ping pong left and right here? Then they chuck the guy back in the ring and beat him up more? No, not in the least. Oh, that's nice. That's real nice. Classy, Mike. What do you mean? Why are they supposed to feel bad? Trying to win the titles. He's a human God being, says. for God's sakes. He's a human oh. being. Oh, oh, don't go to that card. Oh, no. Watch out. Oh. oh, man. What a throw there by Hernandez. Someone as powerful as Supermax, and you get caught in that grasp by him. You are not getting out, and you're going for a ride. So explosive when he pops those hips. And now Chavo, these two complement each other so well. The power, the agility, the veteran instincts, and the cover here. I don't think Eric was just trying to save, uh, you know, save Kazarian. He was, I'm sorry, he's trying Daniels. to save the titles. Exactly, that's what I was trying to say, Mike. He beat me to it. Kazarian needs a hip toss there by Chavo, who continues to be on top of his game here tonight. More tandem offense. Oh, no. Oh, watch out. Oh, big splash. We might have new champs. This team looks unstoppable, don't they? Oh, well, they look good. They look good. How could you look better? A win. That's one way you could win the match right now, and they would look much better. If they won the match right now, they would look better, wouldn't they? Yes. You happy? Yes. All right, split oh. hairs. Missile drop kick off the top by Kazarian. Perfect now, timing there. Yes, perfect, my friend Todd. That was the key word. It was a perfect missile drop kick. Kazarian going to town right now. Looking good. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, happy Sunday night. Bad influence for nothing. Tag is made. And now momentum switching to the team of bad influencer taking control. They break down the big man. Buzz saw like kick. Oh, and what a shot to the back of the head. Oh. And the elbow by Kazarian. Good job. Good job right there. Yeah. And bad influence. You talked about these three teams, Mike, being the best in all of tag team wrestling. Bad influence, when they're in control of a matchup, they really are among the best. It is hard to turn it around. Well, all three of these teams, just superior talents and really great combinations, and there's the power of the big man again. Wow. Super Max, a little Super Tex Max there. Big time power. Chavo checking back in. And this matchup for the World Tag Team title, strong stop action. Head scissors. Chavo, well, he looks the best we've ever seen him. And that's saying something. Swiveling those hips. Up switches up, how about the third amigo there? Now oh, he's gonna keep the series going. Oh, I gotta tip my cap to Chavo. Wow. That rear yes. kick, that was impressive, that was smart. Eyes in the back of his head. He is not giving up on this. Uh oh, though. He got lost count at about six or seven. Yeah, uh, say siete. siete. Oh! What the hell? How many more? It's about 5,000 amigos. <laughs> Bobby Roode has seen enough trying to put an end to that series of suplexes there by Chavo. This thing breaking down though now. That's why Bobby Roode is the bona fide it factor. Shutting down that momentum of Chavo Guerrero and all those suplexes. Bad influence remains in control. And when you're in there, 
You gotta try and take advantage. That's the only way you can win the titles. Score pinfall or submission while you have your shot in this matchup. Kazarian tagged in legal, man. All even Steven here, all clean stuff. By bad influence. Bad influence, Mike. They've really cut off the ring at this point. All of a sudden, match goes in favor of the other challenging team. After the early dominance on the part of Guerrero and Hernandez, now it's Daniels and Kazarian back in control. Back to back, oh. slingshot in. First the elbow, then the leg. Nice leg drop there by Kazarian. Well, that's what happens. Two on one situation. We saw that earlier. Fair bounce, fair, fair, you know, turnabout, fair play. We saw Hernandez and Chavo oh. do that to Daniels for quite some time. Now, how does he like it? And they're absolutely smothering Chavo and Mike, although Chavo looked phenomenal moments ago. How much energy True. did he expel there? How much did it take oh. out of him? Offense has been shut down. Why do you keep talking bad to Mike? Influence takes control. Hey, well, why do you keep talking to Mike? Don't talk to me. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. How about that? Hey, Mike. How about this? Hey, Mike. How about that? Because he knows you're going to inject your opinion, <laughs> even if he doesn't bring your name up. Thanks for talking for a Mike. All right, a little salute by the ring general, who continues to wear down Chavo, Taz. What's that? Oh, you got to X Mike, I don't know. Well, you know, Daniels, multi-time X Division champion. But when it comes to tag team wrestling, Daniels has been in his career an eight-time world tag team champ, trying to make it nine right here, right now. Absolutely, what a decorated history he has here at TNA Wrestling, but you've also talked about it. Chavo Guerrero, he's won tag team gold everywhere he's been. Every organization, his tag team partner Hernandez, six-time world tag team champion with four different partners. Oh, what a drop kick. Well, now, Bobby Roode tagged himself in because, well, because Aaron did not want to tag either Aries or Roode in. And now, here goes the it factor himself, Bobby Roode, eating up Chavo Guerrero. Yeah, this isn't gonna do Chavo any, any favors, that's for sure, the blatant choke. Chavo's gotta just be gasping for air at this point. Hit factor into the cover after the back elbow. And the, the way that this match has evolved, I think Todd, the point that he brought up earlier, maybe Chavo expended way too much energy because ever since those amazing series of suplexes, he's really been on the receiving end just like this time oh. for Aries. Hung out to dry, beautiful double team. Only a two count, and Kazarian, he had his eyes on that. He was ready to break it up, if need be. Yeah, this referee Earl Hebner have his hands full in this uh, one. Oh, yeah, he's, uh, referee Earl Hebner trying to do, uh, he's trying, he's giving an effort out there. He's trying to do the best he can, I guess. He gets on my nerves too, Hebner. I was say, it's the first time you almost gave him a compliment. Yeah, I never liked Hebner, and I know he never liked me either, for years. Really? Yeah. There was that deep-seated hatred between the two of you. A lot of people hate me, Mike. Yep, line forms at the right. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Pick on me, two on one. That's funny. Let's see, come on, Bobby Roode. Do your thing here, kid. Come on. Chavo Guerrero continues to find himself in a hell of a bad position here in the corner of the tag team champs, but trying with every ounce of fight he's got. Oh, man, shoulder thrust in the corner. It'll be hard for him to get out of there. Just when it looks like Chavo is going to escape. The way that Rude, with extra authority, put the shoulders into the midsection, it just takes the wind away from Chavo. Boxes the ears as well. Watch Aries, watch this. Ah, look at that. The ruthless efficiency of Austin Aries, hooking the leg after the drop kick. The boxing to the ears, the drop kick to the back. Chavo might lose his equilibrium here as well, but he's still fighting, damn it. Yeah, he's got heart. Chavo's got heart, trying to fight out of there. But I'll tell you, I don't like his chances. One iota legally tagged in is Bobby Roode. How about the way the champs with a double team out of the corner, exploiting the five count, but in the process, Why, that's doing exactly what they want. I'm just pointing it out. You can okay. say whether it's good or bad. Actually, I just actually In bad. the process, they do exactly what they want. They keep Chavo down. They keep him away from tagging in his partner, Supermax. Why, why are both of you guys so hypersensitive with me? I mean, I, I don't understand this. I'm just trying to you know, do my job and, and help oh. you guys. Just trying to call the action, Taz. Puts on the brakes yet again. Try harder. Right now, look at Root here. Oh, nice. slingshot, oh, Superman punch! Oh, you're not kidding? <laughs> Flying through the air! Pretty good. 
That was unbelievable by Chavo. Oh, both men looking for the same thing there. They both clothesline each other. They're both down. Who can get to their corner first and make the tag? It might be a pivotal moment in this matchup. Chavo had made eye contact with Hernandez. He motioned to him, but before he could turn around to make the tag, he got dropped by the rude clothesline. Rude the fresher of the two, no surprise, because Chavo eating oh, a lot of punishment, and Aries taking everybody out of the equation. Well, that's a good thing if you're Aries. You do not want Supermax in this match at this point, because he was stewing on that apron to help his partner, Chavo Guerrero. Bad influence coming oh, in, wait, wait, What's this? You imagine that just the amount of ego that is in that ring right now. A little bit, a little bit of ego. Teams. Definitely a little bit of ego. Yeah, good thing we're in the Alamo Dome. <laughs> Only building to hold these four egos. Big discus forearm there by Aries. Oh, wow, what a minute oh, collision. Wow. That's a good way to break some ribs. You want to talk about physicality, man. How about the impact as those two men went flying and hit one level. Look out of the corner. Here comes Chavo. Ooh. This guy rocking. Oh, man. Yep. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Super Mex. And now the power comes into play here. Whoa! What the hell was... Go ahead. Oh, I'm saying. It's going to through the freaking roof. That was insane. The power and the speed of, of Super Mex is just unparalleled. I mean, this guy's amazing. Oh, no. Power personified here by Supermax. He's got Aries in a bad way. Just with the ease that he holds him up with one arm. And now, Chavo going to join in. What the hell is Wait this? Wait a minute. Oh! oh! Double backbreaker. Listen to the crowd come alive for that. Damn, just when you think you've seen it all. Cover, pin, Earl, far side. Here we go. Here's the cover, new champs to be crowned. Good job, Aries. Ready to get out of there. We touched on it, Mike, that it would be tough for Earl Hebner, for any official, and Earl's the best, to be able to stay on top of this action. He was momentarily out of position. If he had gotten there a little quicker, we might have new chance. I don't think there's any question. I think it cost Guerrero and Hernandez the tag titles. Well, I don't know if you could say that. Ooh. Oh, there STO! You go. And how impressive is that to take the big man down? Ooh. Chavo. Yeah, so tough in this three-way tag to celebrate. And Rude hits the Uranagi. Oh, my God, what a DDT right there by Kazarian. Total non-stop action indeed. Looking for the fade to black. Rude, oh, oh. Rude saved himself, but... Kazarian couldn't save himself from this series of offense. How about the speed right there of Rude being able to take from his partner, Aries. Hit that double R spine buster, and then here comes Daniels from outside. Tag in, legal, says Earl Hebner. That's right, Daniels, legal man. Look at these two now here. Exchanging punch for punch, Rude. And Daniels. So fitting that these two would trade. Oh! Air Mexico! What a way! And another counter, though, by just Daniels. Call, you just called him hot? Oh, I said the action is. Oh, you didn't call him. That was a little weird. Oh, right now, got caught. Got caught, Daniels. Oh, oh my God. God. Sit out, powerbomb. Plants Daniels. Dead center in the middle. Tag in. Chavo's legal. Chavo going to go high risk. Here he goes. Looking to capitalize, but Kazarian. Oh, this looks dangerous up here. Oh, you're not Whoa, kidding. Whoa. Oh. it is. What a bad landing by Kazarian all the way out to the floor. <laughs> Down to the basement of the no, Alamo and no, had one. Aries going to do here. Uh-oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shoot. Shoot. Aries trying to find Watch his out. Oh, oh, look out here. Right out in front of us here. A little too close to comfort. 
Open hand, palm thrust in the corner. Daniels rocks. Chavo, Daniels gonna follow up. Chavo fights off what looked to be a superplex attempt out of the corner. Now Daniels is down. And listen to the crowd, they know it. Opening's oh, here, opening's here. Can Chavo capitalize? Move. Can they win the tag titles? Move. No better place than San Antonio for the frog splash. Tagged in, I believe. Oh. Root, I think Root from outside. That's right. yeah. Root, Root touched the boot of Chavo. Referee Hefner says that Root's legal. Oh, no. Say, tip my cap here. All six men busted their rear ends out here. That was a great match. Oh, I think it wow. just proved what we talked about the earlier. The absolute dream continue. of the tag team wrestling prop in this one. What an amazing three-way tag match. The champs retain. Well, yeah, that was just, I mean, a, a, a multitude of insanely high-impact moves here from start to finish. You see, Supermax looks phenomenal in this match, amazing. And just a non-stop physicality and the power of Supermax throughout this thing was just something to see. I mean, all three teams had their moments where they completely shine and look completely awesome. That was nuts. I don't know how both men didn't break their ribs there. But you really gotta have your head on a swivel, eyes behind your head, the power again by Supermax. Just the explosiveness, that almost blew the roof off this place. Aries able to get Supermax out. Then the tag by Rude there. That was the game changer. Yeah, well, that was the turning point by yeah. Rude right there, that tag. Right, he tagged himself in. He's like, man, I saw it first, and then Mike, Mike today tried to steal the ball from me. And then right here, speaking of stealing, you see how. Can we go, can we go back and listen to the replay? Well, I just want to say, I Bobby think Rude so, but win. I know you're going to take That's right, I'll that. handle the whole replay package, guys. I got it. But to your point, Mike, this match uh, was. Mr. The... Heavy Lifting himself. Go oh, ahead, Todd. Sure. This was the definition Continue. of what tag team wrestling is all about. But in the end, Aries and Rude take it earlier tonight, guys. Things got hot in our knockouts title match. Let's take a look back. And ever since this matchup, guys, we have heard absolute controversy brewing in the back in terms of Gail Kim, the challenger in this match, and the knockouts referee, Taryn Terrell. It's been the talk of backstage, you and I. I know, Todd, you've heard about this as well. Absolutely. Things are getting seriously volatile. Take a look at the finish there. And for more on this situation, JB standing by in the back. Well, thank you very much, guys. And I do have a lot of questions for my guests at this time. TNA Knockouts referee, Taryn Terrell. And what we saw tonight earlier in the matchup between Gail Kim and Velvet Sky, your thoughts, please. You know, I, I made a judgment call. She has been pushing me and pushing me for months. And at the end of the day, a girl has got to stand up for herself. I can't take this anymore. Was it the right decision? Wow, oh, Gail Kim. Well, redemption. Hey, I gotta tell you, I don't blame Gail. I think she did the right thing right there. Gail Kim all over, these two going at it. Back inside a jam-packed elbow dome here for lockdown. And guys, the cage being constructed. The remaining matches, including lethal lockdown, of course, our World Heavyweight title, will take place inside the confines of the steel cage. And Mike Taz, how incredible has lockdown weekend in its entirety been in the beautiful city of San Antonio? It has been terrific. First time Impact Wrestling TNA in the great city of San Antonio, Texas. And guys, you look all around this massive Alamo Dome. Wall to wall TNA fans, largest crowd in our company history. We knew it Thursday on Impact Wrestling. We've seen it tonight with this incredible crowd. And how about the entire weekend? Fan interaction was terrific. Wrestling fans, Impact oh. Wrestling fans from all over the world coming to San Antonio, making it a weekend. Yeah, the best part of fan interaction is that us, Aces and Ace, we were in the house. Fans got lucky there. <laughs> Great being part of fan interaction. And guys, we're gonna do it all again next time. We are on pay-per-view. You might have heard it, fans. 
the huge news of the location. But if you didn't, take a look at this. Pay-per-view party is going to continue. Slam anniversary Sunday, June the 2nd. A Gannis Arena on the campus of Boston University uh -huh. in Boston, Massachusetts. Tickets on sale Friday, March 29th. Coming to Beantown, Can. Oh, yeah, wait. baby. BU, man, home of the Terriers. <laughs> Come on. That's what I'm talking about. See, tonight is a party, guys. We've been waiting right. nine months for this. We've been waiting nine months for this plan to come together, and it all started with you. Devon, at Bound for Glory, you're the one that gave us access into this company. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Doc, Nux, you guys have taken out Sting on more times than I can count just for the sake of the club. Come on, baby. That's what we do. Anderson, yeah. my man, you're the smartest man in the Impact Wrestling locker room because we recruited you and you said yes. Yes, I did! You damn right. <laughs> Baby boy and Wes, Baby boy. you two put Kurt Angle right where we needed us, right in the middle of that trap so we can crush him like a bug. In fact, Wes, tonight it is you and Angle. Locked inside a cage. Bust him up. Go out there and you handle club business. Set the tone, Wes! Oh, Wes! Come on! Set the tone, Wes! Wes, leave! Now, boys, each one of us has to go down there and bear down tonight, including you, Anderson. What? <laughs> bro, bro. So, let's go over the game plan for Lethal Lockdown. Who wants in first? See, that's what I'm talking about. Doing whatever it takes for the sake of the club. Let's go do this, boys. Oh, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on! Ladies and gentlemen, right now inside the arena, the 15-foot-high steel cage is being constructed. And from here on out at lockdown, every match to be contested inside of that 15-foot-high steel cage, including a matchup featuring my guest at this time. About to step into the ring with Wes Briscoe. We saw what happened Thursday night. D'Lo Brown, the vice president of Aces and Eights. Kurt Angle, your thoughts. Wes Briscoe. Tonight is the night I make you famous. Tonight you go up against the greatest wrestler who ever lived. You and me, one-on-one, -on -one, in a steel cage. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. And D'Lo Brown, don't think I forgot about you either. What you did to this company, to your friends, is unforgivable. And believe me, you're next. And West, you're not like your dad. You're not like your uncle. You're just a snot-nosed little punk that needs his ass kicked. And tonight, I'm gonna give you a good old-fashioned San Antonio ass whooping. Oh, it's real. It's damn real. I studied you. I wanted to be you until I got the chance to meet you. Aces and H just beating the hell out of Kurt Angle, and now it makes sense. Kurt Angle was the victim that was targeted earlier by Aces and H. Then I realized how worthless you really were. I want Aces and Eights, and I got some backup. You guys know Garrett? Yeah. This is Wes Briscoe. You've been training me since high school. You've been seeing all the hard work. My blood, my sweat, my tears. How worthless, just like that tin medal around your neck worthless. for some sport that the Olympics just kicked out, kicked out. Wes Briscoe, have you ever been great at anything? You want to know the reason? You should try bumping into something called work ethic. It's because of you, Hulk Hogan.
Because it isn't just about skill. It's about heart. This Sunday, at Lockdown, in that steel cage, Kurt, I will use you as a stepping stone, and the whole world will know that a Briscoe is better than an Angle. You're not like your dad. You're not like your uncle. Because if you don't respect Kurt Angle, you don't respect the business. I made a mistake by trusting you. Are you freaking kidding me? I will rectify that mistake at lockdown when I beat you within an inch of your life. So before I expose the VP of Aces and Aces to the whole world tonight, I'm not gonna wait till lockdown to whip your ass because I'm gonna do it right now. Angle in control, starts the ground and pound on Briscoe. It's Kurt Angle's problem here. What is his problem? Wes Briscoe of Aces and Eights takes on the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle inside the steel cage. The following contest scheduled for one fall is a steel cage match. The winner will be determined, be determined by pinfall, submission, or escaping the steel cage. Introducing first, representing Aces and Eights, Wes Briscoe! Here we go, here we go. Now the show's gonna crank up, baby. Taz, no matter how much you deny it, Wes Briscoe at this point, he is feeling the butterflies, oh, the stop. nerves, Get out the here. intimidation factor. Because be Wes Briscoe, an inexperienced Wes Briscoe, is about to step inside a steel cage with an Olympic gold medalist. Inexperienced? Yes. yes, I agree with that. But look at this young man's legacy. Yep, let's talk about it. The great son of Jerry Briscoe. That's right. The nephew of the legendary world heavyweight champion, Jack Briscoe. That's right, now stop your points. You are correct on that. And that's his legacy, that's his family, and that's the blood that runs through his body. Now, look at the great men in our club in aces and eights that motivate and are behind this young man. He's confident, look at his face, look at his eyes. He's ready to go, baby. Certainly looks extremely intense. You talked about the legacy. You probably share this opinion, Mike. I think he's tarnishing that legacy. He's a sellout. Oh, I God, this. give me a break. Kurt Angle's the first one that brought that up. And Todd, you and I concur. Okay, oh, sure. so that's symmetric because Kurt Angle brought it up yep. and you and Todd concur. So that means that uh, Wes Briscoe is tarnishing the Briscoe name. Give me a freaking break. You guys are all, you got bigger egos, you two, than Kurt Angle's got. That's right. Don't say nothing today. You got no comeback. Bigger egos? You get that. No comeback. And his opponent from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle! The Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle, hell bent on revenge. What a great reaction by the crowd here in the Alamo Dome, inside the steel cage, not where I would want to be locked with Angle when he's got a personal vendetta. What better platform for Kurt Angle to gain that payback, to gain that revenge? Then inside the steel cage, and you think about how Kurt Angle really put himself out there for Wes Briscoe. Garrett Bischoff spent month after month oh, tutoring God. and mentoring these guys, uh, only to get stabbed in the back. Go ahead. Put himself out there. Kurt Angle, what a martyr. What a friggin' martyr. He comes out and he cries the blues. What I did for you, Briscoe. What I did for you, Bischoff. All the facts. And you know what? Uh, that was a pretty good double leg by Kurt Angle. And you know what? If you didn't want to do it, Kurt, then why did you do it? To put yourself over and rub it in their face? Oh, stop. Oh, that's a fact. He's a martyr. Kurt Angle runs around saying he's the greatest wrestler ever lived. Yes. And Kurt, he's a pretty good wrestler. He's greatest, pretty good. Yep. Uh, that's pretty good, German. Yeah, that's pretty good. But you know what? Greatest wrestler ever lived. That's a pretty long line of great men that are here and that aren't with us anymore for Kurt to say he's the head of that list. Okay, so where would you put Kurt Angle on that list? I put him up. You know, he's probably in the top 
Two, three hundred? Yeah. Oh, top, yeah, top, you should have said stopped it. Top two or three, and maybe even number one. Well, I don't want to brag on him, but if he's at the, the greatest in the world, yeah. I don't know, somebody at this desk has a win on him, but I digress. Wes Briscoe, though, I think it was Todd. <laughs> well, keeping his composure right now has turned this around. A couple lightning quick takedowns by Angle early. Uh-oh. The control escape again. Go ahead, Wes. Go ahead, man. Get out of here. A lot of ways you can win this match, Mike. Oh, no. Probably oh, the no. best option for Wes Briscoe is to try and run, to try and escape, but Kurt able to close the gap and drop him right on his back. Well, listen, Wes Briscoe, a very tough young man. You know, I know you guys got him behind the eight ball and you have no faith in Wes. You don't like him personally. But Wes Briscoe, he's a good person. He's a tough kid. And right now, Kurt Angle's in complete control for now. Hopefully, and Wes. I may not like what Wes Briscoe stands for, but I'm going to tell you he is very athletic, accomplished amateur wrestler. Became a professional, highly ranked wakeboarder before becoming a pro wrestler. Yeah, yes. So there's no doubting the athletic potential of Wes Briscoe, but can he live up to it inside the steel cage? You got to at least admit this task. Angle is a master inside the cage. He's delivered highlight reel moments time and time again when he's in there. And I do admit that, and I agree with you, and you're right about Kurt Angle. Listen, I take nothing away from Kurt Angle, but I'm, I'm not going to sit here and poop all over Wes Briscoe. Oh, that, that was pretty impressive. Kurt Angle, cocky, overzealous, and now look what happens. Now you get caught. The youngster thinking on his feet by the overzealous and overly aggressive, insane maniac cyborg himself, Kurt Angle. And and that's a good point there. Oh, Mike, do you, do you think that perhaps Angle being so hell-bent on revenge that as much of a master technician as he is, that he'll be more apt to make mistakes because he'll be wrestling with his heart out there? Well, that was a mistake by Kurt, and it looks like Wes Briscoe is going to take advantage of that, ripping the shirt off of Kurt Angle, and Kurt has been so successful and in such high-profile matches through the years at our lockdown events. Yeah from matches against Jeff Hardy to Jeff Jarrett to Mr. Anderson to Samoa Joe to being a part of lethal lockdown matches. Just classic, memorable matches through the years. And Wes Briscoe trying to stop that history no, no, right no, no, now. No, 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 Wes Briscoe trying to make his own history. Okay. Okay, that's what he's Full doing. Taken. Okay. And, and Kurt Angle, yeah, he did all those great things in his career. And now it's for guys like Garrett Bischoff. It's his time. It's Wes Briscoe's time. It's aces and eights time. And we're seeing it right now. Kurt had his time. Go away now. Take your gold medal, go for the sunset, and go back to Pittsburgh. Yeah. Todd? Wes Briscoe, yeah, Wes Briscoe. You gonna let him get away with that? No, no, of course not. I don't you know, fight back so much, Moments Todd. ago, Mike, I gotta say this, too. I don't know if you guys caught this. You know, Wes Briscoe obviously used that T-shirt. Wow, oh, look at that. Flapjacks him down to choke out Angle, but that, that shirt, saying to save wrestling, save Olympic wrestling. On the back said, I bleed wrestling. Just throw it in Angle's face. Hold on here, into the cover again. All right, come on, buddy, go! Oh. And, and just really rubbed it in Angle's face in that interview the other day, saying that they just kicked wrestling aside the Olympic Committee. Well, listen, it's, I understand what you're saying, and Wes Briscoe, he's not trying to win a popularity oh. contest. None of us in ACs and ACs are. We are about what we believe. We stand by what we believe as true men, and we are a cohesive unit. We believe in what we believe. Others don't follow what we believe, and that's fine. But somebody with the Wesco pedigree, the, you know, the Briscoe pedigree, you know, how can he crap all over the sport like that? The sport that his family is so known for. Well, you have to you have to ask Wes Briscoe that, but I'm sure he has his reasons. And he doesn't, he, I know he doesn't like you personally, Todd, so he's probably not gonna talk to you. Angle now counters with the boot. And Briscoe is rocked here. He's stumbling on rubber legs. Missile drop kick there by the Olympic gold medalist. Yeah, a little tough goes though for Angle. He can't follow up on that nice missile drop kick. Because Wes Briscoe put a hell of a little beat down on him for a good chunk of time here in this match. Wow, what a great shot that is. A view of this massive crowd at the huge Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Multiple options to win this cage match. It's pin, it's submission. It's escape over the top of the cage and escape through the door. Anything goes as Angle explodes oh, with back-to-back no. -back clotheslines. This Make it three. You, this is what you don't want. Be careful. Be careful. Angle really kicking it into high gear, but he eats another boot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How was that one? As you're rating suplexes tonight. Well, that, was, that was a good suplex. No, that, was a good, good suplex. that was a good belly to belly. I'm giving the guy credit. It was a good, good belly to belly suplex. I'm like, it's the first guy ever. Oh, oh, belly suplex. Oh my God. But now
now here's where the experience inside the oh, steel oh. cage coming into play just rams Briscoe time and time again. Yeah, bar he's a barbarian. That's what Angle is. Look at him. He's bloodthirsty. He's a freaking barbarian. He loves this. Wow. Out of the frying pan into the fire there from the cage right into that rear waist lock and the German. That's nice to teach the youth of, of our industry, Kurt. Teach them how to ram each other with the steel objects. That's nice, uh, Kurt. And Kurt maintains the grip. A third time for Briscoe. Airborne. Dropped him on his back and uh, Kurt like, still got him. Uh, Kurt still got control. him in his clutches. Got to get wrist control here, Briscoe. Got to get rid of him. Man. Takes him over again. Just holding on a death grip. I think Kurt's running out of gas. He's got none left in him. He's got none left in him. Doesn't look like that to me. Death roll like an alligator in there on the hunt. Looks like the needle still on full for Kurt Angle. Briscoe just getting turned inside out. And now perhaps Angle gonna escape. Has he done enough punishment? Is he happy with the revenge? No! Oh, oh Angle will take risk in there! Frog splash <laughs> attempt. Briscoe able to get out of the way. See Kurt Angle. Oh, look, look, nice. Got him, baby. Yeah. Oh, God. Gotta give Wes Briscoe credit. Avoided the high risk move and then went for the side roll and almost got the pin. And goes right into the full mount. Some strikes. You gotta, you gotta say something nice here, guys. You gotta brought Briscoe. I just did. Uh -oh. uh, not enough. Angle oh. slam. How the hell did Angle do that? Where did he pull that out from? Unbelievable, but Angle had a lot taken out of him when he missed that big splash. The follow-up offense by Briscoe not immediately able to cover here. What do we have, a USA chant? I guess Tampa is not part of the US. That's where Briscoe's from. <laughs> Texas. Too funny. Come on, Briscoe, get up. Get to a vertical base. Do something here. Oh, oh yeah, he did something all right. No disqualification. Oh. Anything goes aspect of the cage match exploited and used by Wes Briscoe with a vicious, violent low blow. That'll spin your pecans around on a Sunday night, huh? <laughs> now, whatever the hell that means, but I'll tell you what. Anything goes inside the cage, but you'd like to think you'd have some of the options. Here we go. The options yeah. in the match, Todd. He's on the to go through the door. He's out. Come on, Briscoe. Yeah, baby. Oh, oh Angle gets there in just the nick of time. And he's got the angle on. No, that's the way you drag him back in. One fluid movement right into the submission. Rolled through. Tuck and roll, Briscoe. Get the hell out of that. That a boy. Good job. Oh, almost right on cue. And Angle goes right into the solid steel. Angle really needed to drop down and scissor the legs, but Briscoe able to counter. It was a great counter. And you guys are ripping Briscoe for his inexperience. Shame on both of you for those comments. Didn't rip him, just yes, pointed out the obvious. Come on, Briscoe. Come on, buddy. Briscoe, the youth on his side. You talked about earlier, Mike. This might be his best option. Oh, yeah. Scale that cage. He's almost to the top. Come on, Kurt. We got Kurt's got to make up ground. No, no. Get out of here, Kurt. Get the hell away from him. Oh, jeez. Angle. Oh, Kurt's going to bring him back in. Drag him back in, Kurt. Scary spot for these two now. They battle on the top rope. Well, they're laying them in right above the broadcast table. That's physical, folks. <laughs> that is physical. Nasty oh. shots by both men. Yeah. As the yeah. Alamo Dome crowd responds. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Into the cage. Crowd chanting in unison here. Three shots, four shots. Uh oh. Uh oh. No. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Don't What's do he going to do? Oh, 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 German suplex off the top. <laughs> Insane suplex by Angle. I will give the devil his due. But I'm telling you, I, don't, I, I, I gotta say, Wes Briscoe, still in one piece, shows that kid is all man. Kurt, first man back up to oh his no. feet, drops down to a knee, and he's got him in his sights. Oh yeah, target locked. Turn around, turn around quick. And it might be target assassinated here, no. Good job, Wes, good job, Wes. Oh, oh, oh man. Ryan Hebner turned inside out. Yeah. By the clothesline, Kurt mistakenly hits the ramp and rolls through into the ankle. Oh, what the hell's going on here? Let go of his ankle. Oh, right? there it is. And There's Bristol's the tapping. There's the tap. Ah, uh, but the referee, unfortunately, Kurt Angle 
punch the referee in the face. He, I guess inadvertently, accidentally knocked the ref down. Damn it. This match should be over. When you're a cyborg and you're a barbarian, that's how you act sometimes. You knock referees out by accident. Briscoe repeatedly pounding the mat, tapping out in submission. Kurt Angle should win the match. No, Kurt Angle should be disqualified. Okay, and he shouldn't be putting his hands on Briscoe anymore. Anything goes, another angle slam. Oh, yeah, how's that's, that? That's classy. That's all high road right there. Speaking volumes. Angle's gonna, he's gonna escape here. Keep going out the door. Yeah. That's the escape. It's the referee saying, does Brian Hebner see the bat? Did Kurt Angle's going through the door? That's a, oh. what the hell? Angle's won this match two times, damn it. What is going on? D'Lo Brown. Smashing Kurt <laughs> off the cage door. Toss you back in. Oh. Yeah. The VP, baby. Oh, wait, what do we have here, ref? No. Yeah. <laughs> the winner was Briscoe. Oh, it's too easy. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, it's too freaking easy. Oh, these guys. <laughs> These TNA guys just don't get it. We're just two, three, four steps ahead of them. West Briscoe with the big victory, baby. The big victory. D-Lo, D-Lo left behind you, bro. <laughs> Good job, baby. Hey, West, way to go, kid. Way to go. <laughs> Briscoe steals the win. What a load of bull here in Texas. Angle had won the match twice, once by submission, once by escaping the cage. VP comes out here, does the dirty work for the Aces and Eights, and this is a damn travesty. Well, I don't know, you say a travesty, I say a, a great yeah. success. Let's, let's win. confirm what Todd just said. Let's go to the replay. Yeah, why don't you call it, Mike? Do your work, do, do your job for once. Man, tell me what happened. This is Kurt Angle, dragging, pulling Wes Briscoe back into the cage and then unleashes the tremendous suplex off the top rope. Kurt continued in control. Double one gun salute. That's the second time that Kurt had the match won. Yeah. But you can see the referee Brian Hebner. Well, the yeah. side of the ring is down. The VP of Aces and Eights, D'Lo Brown. Infiltrating management. And now coming out well, to cost Kurt Angle the match. Not well, only tosses yeah. Kurt in, let me finish well, this. I'll take this but one. then pulls Wes Briscoe out I to victory. It. In other words, Wes Briscoe did nothing to win this match. Kurt Angle had it won twice and a miscarriage of justice, aces and eights victorious. Well, I don't know when I see it, the winner was Wes Briscoe. I mean, that's what I heard. And uh, you know what? Maybe Bring next time, Kurt Angle should decide to take the mask off of our vice president. Angle probably should have done. Well, this war is not over. Still yes. to come, lethal lockdown. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the first inductee in the TNA Hall of Fame, the icon, Day. Slammiversary 2012 is going to go down in history as being one of the greatest nights that I've ever experienced in pro wrestling. I want to thank most of us. Who are these guys? Who are these guys? Stay. We've been waiting to get our hands on you. We will make our presence felt in a very big way. This is the group that will destroy TNA. Who's behind? Aces and eights. This is total nonstop anarchy. How can I pass up on the opportunity to be part of the machine known as Aces and Eights and to live by the vision of a higher power? You honestly believe that you have a team that's going to take on the Aces and Eights. This is the team that will dominate TNA. You're gonna lead your team to the slaughter. Now you testify to that. Aces and Ace called out the whole TNA roster, and they wanna have a war to end all wars and lockdown. Go out there and get us that man advantage and leave the lockdown. Take care of business, dog. You see, on day one, when I joined Aces and Ace, I was told you will never walk alone. And you see, as I stand here with my brothers behind me, I know I can trust each and every one of them with my life. Sting, can you say the same thing? 
Can you trust the guys that you're going to be locked in the cage with? This is an ace. They say we can't trust anybody. We obviously can't trust Dino. The question is, can we trust each other right here? Trust. You can trust us. We are at war. Mini neck breaker oh. attack. Closing time. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Aces and eights trying to stack the deck. But here comes the cavalry on the other side. Mike Chad. Two and one. Two got him. Got him. Huge yes. advantage for aces and eights. They've got the numbers game in lethal lockdown. Aces and eights prepare to face the wrath of the icon Sting and Team TNA in lethal lockdown. The bowling contest scheduled for one fall is a lethal lockdown match. The winner will be determined by pinball or submission. Introducing first representing Aces and Eights, Mr. Anderson. I'm always intrigued by the strategy of the teams and the team captains in terms of who they send out, especially early in this matchup, and then as the match progresses, the later that we get, who they send at the end of the end. What do you mean it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. It's one of the most important strategic uh, aspects of this kind of match. We got the man advantage. We are aces and eights. Thank you to Wes Briscoe for getting the ball rolling, the momentum now, tonight at lockdown here in Texas. I understand your point, though, Mike. I wasn't done with my point. All right. The momentum's in, momentum's in our favor. They finally came up for air. We yeah. thought you were. You're right. They earned that advantage, winning that best of three series. But, Mike, the first two men in this matchup, Anderson and whoever comes out here for Team TNA, they're going to be in this thing for the long haul, and they might be susceptible. Once all men are in there, that's the only time a match, the match can come to an end. Thank you. Todd understands oh. exactly what I was saying. Oh, okay. The other member of the broadcast team would have got on board with that. You mean the successful, credible member? That would be the voice of Aces and Aces, yours truly. <laughs> That'd be me, Cass. And his opponent, representing Team TNA, Madness! I like that logo he's got. It reminds me of like, uh, looks like a Marvel Comics type thing going on there. <laughs> that victory logo might be shades of things to come for Team TNA. Talk about strategy, Mike. Your thoughts on this choice? I'm intrigued absolutely by the fact that Team TNA in general, and in particular the team captain Sting, decides to go with Magnus in the leadoff spot. Great athlete, might have the conditioning to endure, endure what will be just a hellacious war. These yeah. first two, they're gonna battle for three minutes, Mike, before it'll be a member of Aces and Eights. You talk about Taz, you've got the advantage coming up. That's right, all guys, Aces and Eights have the advantage, so what Anderson needs to do is just keep rocking here. And, and it begins in this match. Please in, don't interrupt me, Mike. In Please stop interrupting me. High profile, high stakes situations. This has to be a career top for Magnus. Anderson, two-time world heavyweight champion, but for Team TNA, <laughs> to look at someone like Magnus, have the confidence to send him out here in the leadoff spot. I think it's huge for Magnus and his career going oh, confidence. forward. Confidence? Yeah. This was the same guy that they doubted on Thursday night, meaning Magnus, that he, that he was the, you know what I mean? He might be in bed with us. Well, you were the one that was really painting that picture. He's on the seat. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. And he stepped up and helped his team get a victory in one of those, you know, series matchups. Not enough to get the job done overall. But, and he obviously has a bone to pick, a big one at that, with aces and eights after being put on the shelf for months. So he's got revenge on his mind. Gonna take it out now, flying knee there by Magnus. Well, there's no doubt that Magnus is a tremendous competitor. He's in amazing condition. He's a big, strong, rugged, young athlete. And, and, and look, hey, he's super talented, I agree. But he's no match for someone like, well, like Anderson, except for that move right there. Otherwise, he's no match. Nice clothesline there by Magnus. And Mike, it is so important for him to maintain the advantage. Huge. Because a member of Aces and Eights will be coming out here in mere moments, and it will be two on one oh. for two minutes time. Into the cage, there goes Magnus. That's when the absolute face of this oh. match changes. Countdown clock on your screen shows that we are approaching the one minute mark before the next member of Aces and Eights comes out. And at that time, for that next two minute period, they are going to have a huge advantage. It's two on one, then three on two, four on three, five on four. It's what they earned Thursday night on Impact Wrestling. 
and it's how you can really beat down the opposition. It's gonna be a complete, it's party time. It's just a complete party. To sit here during this lethal lockdown match, watch our boys and aces and ace have the advantage, completely guzzle up the TNA team, or Team TNA, whatever Sting called it. How long did that take for the marketing team to come up with that? Team TNA. Whew. Two minutes? One minute? How long? As they're representing the company. Oh, thanks. This band of Yeah, thank thugs. you, Captain Obvious. Got yeah. it. Well, then, why pose the question? Because I felt like it. Body bag, Todd. Body bag. Not Watch looking yourself. good. Hold on. Mic check attempt. Here we go. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? They even keep me in suspense. <laughs> These guys are so funny. See who? Catchy tune, right, today? <laughs> so you didn't have anything to do oh. when it comes to choosing who's next. The next competitor, Nux! Nux, baby! Big, bad Nux. I had nothing to do with it, Mike. I've been out here carrying you and Todd. Catchy tune grows on you like a cancer. Here comes Nux, and this is a guy that can do a hell of a lot of damage. Oh, he's ready. He's ready to just kick some rear end here, too. I don't like Magnus's chances. One iota with Anderson, and now Nux. This is where it gets dangerous for Team TNA. This is where Aces and Eights can do exactly what they've done ever since they burst onto the scene here in TNA and Impact Wrestling, and that's use the numbers game to their advantage. That's why getting this advantage throughout the Lethal Lockdown match fits right into their game plan. Oh, the leverage there by Nux. He's a real powerhouse. He's really been one of the enforcers of the Aces and Eights. Powerhouse? My man is gigantic. Like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Massive, twisted, pissed off dude is Nux. And remember, until we reach that point where all 10 competitors are inside the cage, it's not about a pin, not about submission, not about escaping the cage. It's all about forcing your will, beating down the opposition, and then once we finally get to all 10 men, then it's first pin or submission. Big sidewalk watch slam this, there. Watch this, watch oh. this, look at this, look at this. Yeah! A little tribute right there to our general manager. <laughs> yeah, just I'm rubbing it in the Hulkster's face. Ah, I'm, just, I'm having a blast. Aces and eights, though, they gotta have a sense of urgency here, Tess, because we're inside Why? a minute now, oh, oh, and, oh. and then Team TNA, it'll be even Steven there for hold two on, minutes. On. Don't call me Steven, first of all. And what do you talking about sense of urgency? Beating the hell out of one guy here. We're killing this guy. We're killing Magnus. But that advantage for uh, two minutes' time is about to be gone. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Time to even the score. Time to get member number two of Team TNA out here to join Magnus. Let's find out who it's going to be. Oh, yeah. The next competitor, Samoa Joe. Yeah, I don't like this here. This is not good. Oh, no. Let me see your war face. That's a war face. Here comes Samoa Joe. Whoa. Magnus is tag team partner in the past. His tag team partner on Thursday night. And Samoa Joe is going to take it right oh. to the neck. Just about kicked his head right off. Tim Burr takes the big man down, cuts down the tree. And there you Anderson, go. though, cuts him off. There you go, Anderson. You got him where you want him now. Oh, no. Watch Former out. Tag team champs working together here. Sent oh. by Joe. After the big boot by Magnus as they're working in tandem. Spectacular teamwork by Joe and Magnus. Okay, I'll admit it. Good move by Sting by putting Joe in the two hole. I admit it. Good job. Not gonna be enough though. See, I'm not like you guys. I I'm even. I'm even. Yeah, Mr. Right down the middle. That's right down the middle, Daddy. Always been your reputation. Just calls him like he sees him. Team Taz. There we go. Magnus. Big right hand though. The score has been evened up here and now, and, and it's to the advantage of Team TNA, but that is only fleeting, Mike. You talked about a sense of urgency earlier for Team Aces and Eights. The sense of urgency really at this point is with Team TNA because they know going forward that the man advantage yes. is always going yes. to be with Aces and Eights. So this is the time period wow. where Team TNA really well, needs to show their best. Mike TNA, you finally made a good point tonight. Good job, kid. Two hours in and I got one. <laughs> Oh, come on, get out of there, Anderson. Series of elbows here by the former tag team champions. We're taking it to. Uh, look how they're taking their time, though. Uh, look, at, look at Joe and Magnus, they're taking their time, getting cocky. See, that's the ego and attitude of these guys. That's, that's leadership. That's Sting not being a good leader. That's what that is, in my opinion. Here we go. It's time to get even now. Time to get even up. Who's it gonna be now from us? What do you mean, time to get even up? Gonna be even. Time to take two. the advantage. Well, we have we won the advantage on Thursday. Come on, here we go. Who's it gonna be all fired up? The next yeah. competitor, Garrett Bishop.
Bischoff. I keep trying to high five my guys that run right by me. Oh, oh Garrett oh. Bischoff, yep, one of the young guns of Aces and Eights. Come on, Garrett. Goes yeah, right yeah. after Magnus. Garrett, man, he's like a puma in there. It's like a look like just attacks quick, goes to the next guy. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, just like Wes Briscoe, another one of the turncoats. Look, 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 Garrett Bischoff just beating down Magnus. Look at this. Huge advantage because as he comes in, it's not only the numbers game, it's the fresh man coming into the cage. Absolutely. And again, aces and eights. Did you hear the great crowd here in the Alamo Dome oh, that's telling right. Garrett what they think of his abilities? Oh, man, how do you know they're talking about Garrett? They might be talking about Magnus. Well, Joe, how do you know? You don't know. Good point. Exactly. Oh, oh shot there oh. by Joe. Following it up now is Magnus. Big boot. Joe has been lethal. Oh, what a knee strike. In spite of the numbers edge for aces and eights, Magnus and Joe turn it around. Yeah, I'm a little surprised or, or perplexed at seeing what's going on here. This is not the way this is supposed to go down. Momentum well, now, amazingly, in the side of Team TNA, kind of scoring a shorthanded goal here. Mike, we can use the hockey reference. Right, what is this? What are they like a two on the... They call uh, Joe told uh, Magnus that they pulled some move here. The hell is this? Powerful corner clothesline by Joe. Motions to Magnus. They've got something in mind. Oh, he got caught by Anderson. <laughs> Yes. Anderson oh, just ran him yeah. down there, and now a long way down for Magnus. Gets slammed off the top. And the numbers game becomes Nux. a factor give again. Nux, give Nux some credit. Give him some love. His name is Nux. Yeah. Nux. <laughs> Bunch of stooges, that's for sure. Yeah, there's only one stooge at this desk, my friend. Momentum is about to switch, guys, because things are about to be evened up. Three on three, three seconds. Your next competitor, Eric Young! Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. The pants come down, the gloves come off, and here comes Showtime. The guy runs out here in his underwear, takes his time while his friends get their asses kicked. Not taking any time now. Yeah, he's, he's wearing his bloomers. What the hell is he wearing? He's a maniac. This is an intense, this is a serious Showtime Eric Young, and he's got to be in the cage. Scoop and a slam, man, Eric Young. He is on fire here like a man possessed. Look at him go. And we are seeing exactly why Team Captain Sting assigned Showtime Eric Young to Team TNA and Lethal Lockdown. Well, Eric Young, is, he's, he's there's something wrong. There's obviously several screws loose in his brain. Okay, he's probably not even medically clear to compete because he's nuts. So that makes him dangerous. Another guy that was three plus months on the sidelines. Yep, taken out. His ankle absolutely shattered. Uh, you know, you get in the way of the machine known as Aces and Eights. Sometimes you get put out. You know, Eric Young, kind of a dark horse at Team TNA. Kurt Angle himself even kind of questioned the stinger about it. But who better to represent this company? Someone who's been here for so long. He bleeds TNA. Hopefully, hopefully, he, start, no, hopefully <laughs> he does. Hopefully he starts bleeding in this match. I'm not bloodthirsty or anything, I'm just saying. <clears throat> Quick flurry of offense from the second that Showtime Eric Young hit the cage. Ever yeah. since then, things uh, have, have definitely evened uh, out. He ran into Garrett Bischoff. That's Garrett Bischoff using his face like a piece of cheese on a cheese grater. Oh, but Joe. Oh, no. Over on the other side, all over him. Oh, now, already. Go. Time to get busy, baby. Come on, who's it going to be? <laughs> Song just makes me want to dance. Yeah, Sergeant. The Sergeant Oaks. Devon. Can't A really experienced member of Aces and Eights could be a huge difference maker. In this matchup at this point, Taz. Oh, my brother, testify. Devon's about to get busy. You can just tell. TV champion about to head in the cage. Team TNA doing great up to this point. Let's see if they can fight back against the numbers. Well, all good things must come to an end. Just now, Ooh. it will just be a complete, complete beatdown of Team TNA. Numbers advantage. Back to the aces and eights. An advantage that they earned this past Thursday on impact. And as you also touched on, the fresh man becomes such a factor in this lethal lockdown it's match. It's huge. Not only the numbers, but you're right. 
It's a revitalized and refreshed Devon who gets dropped by Eric Young, but then Garrett Bischoff from behind. So that's how, how we protect each other. Notice how Garrett saw Devon was in, in, in dire straits for a moment because of Eric Young's attack. We watch each other's back, and that was a nice attack from behind by Samoa Joe. Taking a page out of the playback. Look at these overhand strikes by Joe. Oh my goodness, but Magnus hit hard and heavy into the steel. By Nux. You don't like saying Nux's name, do you? I'm going to tell him. him into the cage. I will I don't tell him. Any, I do not oh, you want, want any problems with Nux. He doesn't like pronouns, Todd. No, I'm not a big fan of pronouns. Apparently Never not. was. <laughs> Devon with the big right hands. Yeah. And he's very much at home Who's in this he? kind of environment. Devon, oh, the you. sergeant at arms. Yes, my man, my brother. Uh-oh, wait, got 10 seconds here, and then. And then? Well. <laughs> finish your thought. No, I'm not finishing my thought. Sorry. About I hate Dan this guy. Luck. The next competitor, Gene Storm. Oh, yeah. The cowboy, James Storm. He's probably drunk. You almost have to be to have some liquid courage to go in Ooh. to a war zone like this. We never met a fight he didn't like. Never met a beer he didn't like. That breaker onto Anderson now all over. Garrett Bischoff just firing up on him. Yeah, you don't want Storm to stop, you know, connecting moves together. There's no doubt about it. James Storm, definitely a deadly competitor. But, oh. Closing time on Nux. Come on, Nux. Say his name yeah, there. Right, he just yeah, made it. Yeah, 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 the wise guy. Come on, Nux. You're going to block that. You can't let him do that closing time. Oh! Last call. God. And if there were pinfalls at this point in the match, match Mike, this thing might be over, but not the case. If. If. You know what I said about if a couple of weeks ago, right? About my aunt and my uncle? Ugh. Yeah. Well, let me say it again. Crickets. Okay. I recall that, yep, in uh, England. That was a good one. Uh, Anderson so brutal as well. Oh, he will send it, Devon. What position down here at ringside. You're gonna really appreciate the physicality of the competitors here in the lethal lockdown yeah. match. It's funny you say that while Team TNA is beating the hell out of aces and eights. It's nice that you say it there, Mr. Bias. I'm Mr. Bias? Yes, After you're everything we put up with you for the past month plus? I'm a team player. Okay, I'm a team player. If the team is aces and eights. Well, that's the team I'm on, pot, yes. Pot meat kettle. Yeah, and we wear black. Ooh. Nice elbow there by Magnus, center of the ring. Okay, okay. Yes, count down. Five, four, come on, come on, come on. I know who it is. I know, I just got a text. I know who it is. Who else could it be? Those are we all the same song for continuity purposes. The next competitor, Doc! Big Doc! Big Doc! The director of chaos. So one of my closest friends. friends. One of my closest friends, by the way. So instrumental. We'll get him, Doc. In many of the brutal attacks by Aces and Aces. Left you high and dry, all five of them, didn't they? Begging for a high five by one of my boys. All right, they've got their game faces on, that's for sure. Doc is an absolute beast. He is Look just laying just, them out. He can do, listen, Doc can do whatever the hell he wants right now to Team TNA, along with his brothers at arms. The rest of the Aces and Aces in this match. With the size of Doc, especially considering who he's in this cage with. So many big individuals, but to see someone like Doc show the power and the size off the slam, Nux drops the elbow. Look at this, look. Nux and Doc, like two big redwoods falling on you. They are absolutely eating Magnus alive in there right now. And Aces and Aces standing tall. At one man advantage, they are dominant right now. Yeah, buddy, that's how we roll. A little celebration time. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to be fair out here. Sorry to laugh in your face. Oh, look at those body shots. You can just hear them. This is your opportunity to gloat, Taz, because you've got this five on four. Things are about to get even. Now. We earned but it. Until that point, you earned the edge, exploited your 
just about 10 seconds away. Now the countdown clock shows 10. Now we go under 10. Let's even it up. Oh, it's nice you're getting that fired up, Mike, but yes, we did earn it. We did earn that man advantage. So proud of the guys. Come into play. I know that. The 10 men are in the cage, and now we turn them loose. Absolutely anything goes in there, and now is when this match. Oh, and oh my God, look at Sting go. He's got an equalizer. Who's afraid of the big black bat? All 10 men in the cage. That means, bottom line, next pin, next submission. Wins the match for either Team TNA or Team Aces and Aids, and Sting going to bring Crash Can 1 floating. Turn it over to Joe. OK, but we need some of these weapons. Our guys need to grab some of these weapons. Stinger was the last oh. member in. Everybody oh, hell come the to break loose. Oh, my god. That cookie sheet just baking up some pain. And that trash can by Joe. Well. This is insane. This is a bludgeoning. Just wearing our guys out with weapons. Oh, this is nice. This is real nice. Aces and eights getting the medicine that we've seen for months all the time when aces and eights use weapons, when aces and eights use the hammers, and now they gotta pay. Somebody stop this. It can only be stopped when somebody gets the pin or submission, but right now, I don't think that's gonna happen because Team TNA is having fun in there, getting some revenge. Like you said, Mike, give them a taste of their own business. Can't taste good for Aces and Aids. No, 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 no. no, it definitely doesn't taste good, and I'm not in there. We need to get our hands on some of those weapons, man. We gotta level the playing field here. And these shots with these weapons just echoing off the walls of the Alamo Dome. Why does Sting get to bring the weapons down? That was an unfair advantage. That's, that's not right. That really isn't. Well, this don't come into play I'm until all well, ten men are in the cage. I'm a little disappointed in Sting's actions. I have to tell you that. I am. I know him a long time. I'm very disappointed in that. Unprofessional of him. Yeah, that's right. Don't say anything. Cowboy stepping up to the plate. Oh, my oh, goodness. God. It's a little grounder. No yam back, Yahtzee? Yeah, they just think so. Yeah, yeah. Well, be quiet today. We need help out here. We need somebody. We have a security to stop this, this attack, this assault that these TNA, uh, Team TNA is just putting on our guys. San Antonio, they're loving the icon. Have we done anything offensive here when these weapons are in play? Can we get our hands Not on a thing. something, on, on a butter knife, anything? It's been minutes ever since Sting brought the weapons in. It's been all Team TNA. This is a trap. Sting, trap. Joe, yeah, they, the storm, they trapped us. Oh! What a shot by Samoa Joe. Sting, get a hand, the trash can off to Joe. Take another free shot, Joe. No, oh, gonna set it up for a stinger splash in the corner. Cannot believe Mike Tenay, the professor, a true respect, a man who respects our business, is gloating and happy over a young man like Garrett Christopher for a legacy who just got worn out with a weapon. Just I'm trying to balance your BS out here. Oh, that's nice. That's a, that's a real broadcast journalist using that language. We need to get our hands on a weapon out here. We really do. Come on, guys, let's go. Let's, let's get... You know what the hell? Just get out of the cage. Just give up at this point. Okay, and Eric it. Young directing traffic, pointing something out to Sting. Well, oh, asking for the trash can if, to be put over his head. Oh, if Eric Young is directing traffic, then that's good for us. This would be a good way to put out your lights. All right, we're looking good here. We're lo here comes Sting again. Stinger splash. Looking good. The hell match are you watching? Well, I don't I thought that I thought maybe he would move, but he had Enough. a can over his head. Come on! Total dominance continues just wearing out the members of Aces and Eights. That advantage you had is out the window. Oh no. No! Whoa, 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 whoa. EY puts on the brakes, fortunately. Oh! Well, you let the guy with the smallest brain do the thinking. That's the problem. 
That was a close one, and now, Taz, you're getting your way because aces and eights are getting their hands on those equalizers now. Oh, it's payback time, my friend. Almost as if in mass, right before our eyes, you can just sense that huge momentum swing because the weapons are now the property of, of aces and eights. It's playtime, boys. When you got weapons, you're in our wheelhouse, son. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> Devon just measured him. Oh. That sounded like a cannon. Like the uh, Alamo. Eh, maybe it didn't hurt anyone that much. He's got a massive head. Looks like he's got a football helmet on with skin over it. Devon, he's uh, swung his fair share of weapons in his day, hasn't he, Tad? Yeah, he's pretty good at it. That's why he's the sergeant at arms. Look at this, look at this. Yeah, yeah it was all fun and games, right? Everybody was cheering and loving it when our guys were getting worn out. How about now? Uh-oh, look out here. Doc Scott, EY. Big choke slam. The Cowboys got oh, his hands back on the Stop him, can. stop him. Oh. Stop Storm. Someone's going to, what the hell is that? Magnus. Whoa! What a, what a tremendous power move by Magnus on Doc. I don't even know where he got that from. Magnus has been in the street from the very beginning. Got a showdown. Got a showdown here. Garrett Bischoff with the baseball bat. Comes face to face with Storm and Magnus. And Garrett taking the coward's way out. Yeah, looks like he's trying to surrender. No, 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 no. No, he was outnumbered. Can't play him, Garrett. He's outnumbered. Oh, 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 oh. Save him, save him, guys. This is bad. This is dangerous. Oh. Got, whoa, whoa. What the hell is going on here? Oh, Garrett Bischoff hung upside down. Anderson underneath. Oh, no, oh, no, no, here comes Joe. Here comes Joe. Oh, my God. Garrett, no. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. God. Wait, Joe's got a submission on. What the hell is this? Oh, this is the same. Don't tap. Don't tap. Oh, yeah. Just on the verge of victory. Now with, with a big TNA. save there. Yes. Now Joe had him dead to rights. Nail Sting. Nail him already. He's the reason why this is happening. Put Sting out. Next swing in the steel. Oh, oh. blindsided by EY. Lux. Lux. Don't take oh. that. Scorpion dead drop by the icon. EY came up big there. Look at, look at. Sting came face to face with Showtime Eric Young. Motion for Eric to go to the corner. Sting hit the dead drop. Get out of the way. Knox, get out of the way. Sting says, what? Top rope's not good enough. No, no. Sting. He's telling Eric to Top climb out. Top rope's not good enough. He's telling the coward's way out. He's telling him to climb oh out. Oh, my God. Showtime! No. Eric Young! No! Top of the steel cane! No! no. Oh, he's got to be a little bit crazy to do this! Ah. Oh. Oh. Top of the cage! Elbow drop! Cover him! Hook the leg! Yes! Team TNA wins! Your winners, Team TNA! So that's what it took. So that's what it took. Scorpion death drop by Sting and Eric Young doing some elbow drop off the top of the friggin' state of Texas. It's exactly what it took, and that's exactly what they did. That's the only way to get a victory on the great men of Aces and Aces is to go to the top of the state of Texas. He almost hit friggin' Oklahoma. That's how high up he was. Yeah, that's right. Leave the lockdown. All about going to war. All about settling the score. Team TNA banded together. What a huge victory here at Lockdown. That hurt. Oh, I cannot wait that to go back and check out the highlights. Oh, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can, Mr. TNA. I'm sure you can, TNA. You're pissing me off. All right, as we look back, this was unbelievable, Joe. Tower of doom out of the corner. Samoa Joe able to take the entire group with Garrett Bischoff from the top. Another angle shows you just how spectacular that was. And then Sting sets the table, turns to Eric Young, tells him to go to the top of the cage. Big elbow off the top does the trick. That hurt. Unbelievable action inside Lethal Lockdown, and there you see your victory.
Raptors. They went to war. They got it done. When the smoke is cleared, they win the war here tonight at lockdown. They got lucky. They got lucky. Yeah, there was no cage here. He stood on top of the cage, Eric Young. That was, that was an insane move. I mean, it shows to the depths and the desperation of Team TNA that the, how desperate they are to be the victors. That guy puts his life in danger, Eric Young. Half a brain. My he, opinion yeah, what? in this huge win at all costs war against break. Aces and Eights. This is the definition of a momentum builder ever since Aces and Eights arrived on the scene here in oh. Impact Wrestling in TNA. This is the biggest momentum switch because Team TNA has taken control. I don't agree with that at all. I don't get out of the way. I don't agree with that at all, what you just said. I don't agree at all. At all. That's all you're going to say? That's exactly you're not going to back it up with any facts? But what facts? You got all you the got facts. None. You have all the facts. You have missed the factoid. Why are you in my way? You have missed the factoid. Set the table for the main event. Guys, fact of the matter is, Taz, Team TNA gets the win. And then there is one match to go, and it will be inside the steel cage. Jeff Hardy defending the world heavyweight title against the number one contender, Bully Ray. And I want to find out how the Impact Wrestling fans voted, oh, who yeah. they picked, whether it was Bully Ray or Jeff Hardy. What's the decision? I can't wait. We take a look at it now. And how about that? 51% to wow. 49. Doesn't get much closer than that, gentlemen. Just a slight margin of victory for the champion. But will it go down tonight? Can Hardy do it? Yet again, the battle-tested champion puts it on the line in our main event. I give you your number one contender to go against Jeff Hardy. Lockdown, Bully Ray. Never in my wildest dreams that I ever think that me and you would be getting ready to wrestle for the most prestigious world heavyweight championship in professional wrestling. When it comes to cage matches, he's extremely familiar. We have a lot of uh, history. And um, sure, I, I would say Bully's probably going to be uh, more hungry to become world champion. I don't want to get a shot at the world title just because I'm Hulk's son-in-law. I don't feel right about this. I love the fact that Hogan shows you. Right now, everybody at TNA is looking for the next leader. Bully Ray and Mr. Hardy are the best of the best. I'm speaking for myself when I tell you this, Jeff. I am proud of you. But I can honestly say I've never really been proud of myself. There's only one way I can do that when I take that belt from off your shoulder, raise it in the air, and declare Bully Ray TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Whoever wins whatever happens in lockdown, I do want you to know I'm proud of you too, man. This guy's gonna beat the hell out of me Sunday. Will it be enough? What am I willing to do to win the world title? I'm surprised you'd even ask me a question like that. I'll do whatever it takes. And lockdown, we're gonna reinvent our history. May the best man win. Hell yes! I'm gonna walk out of lockdown, world champion, because I can. I can guarantee you I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it like a mother to San Antonio. I think this may be the best cage match professional wrestling's ever witnessed. Bully Ray challenges the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship inside the steel cage. And it is main event time here at Lockdown World Heavyweight Championship on the line. And Taz, take us through the tail of the tape. Well, listen, obviously, you're going to have a size advantage in Bully Ray. You see that right there. But you know, look, you, you know, look, I, I gotta get the devil's due here in Jeff Hardy. He's loaded with a Tesla fortitude, loaded with heart. We've seen that time and time again. I don't like either of these guys. Either of them. So I, I don't know why you're through to me to handle this, to be honest with you. Heavyweight Championship. 
Name the number one contender by GM Hulk Hogan himself. And how about those words of inspiration from the Hulkster earlier tonight? That is the definition of a game face for the challenge of the number one contender. And when it comes to those inspirational words from Hulk Hogan, I don't think a lot of people realize and recognize just how much a wrestling historian this man, Bully Ray, really is. We've seen it through the past couple of months, coming out with face paints as tributes, types of moves, motions like this that Bully Ray has done. So for Bully Ray to get that kind of inspiration, from Hulk Hogan, oh talking God. about Andre the Giant. I'm gonna throw up. It's gotta be huge. I'm gonna, th I'm gonna literally vomit right here. And Bully Ray, you're lucky you're in that cage, Bully Ray. He's lucky he's in that cage. I'd whoop his ass. I'd whoop his ass. He's lucky he's in that cage. That's right. I'm Teflon Death. You can't touch me, but I can touch you. Don't get me going today. I see eyeballing me. He's lucky he's in that cage. But this isn't about you tonight. It's about Bully Ray, and it's about that man, the world heavyweight champion, yeah! the charismatic commitment, Jeff Hardy. Oh, well, you're right. It's not about me. But it's, not, it's not part of me. It's an answer. It's never about us. It's always about these other guys. Okay, yeah, you know what? Listen, Jeff Hardy, a great world heavyweight champion. I know that. I know Jeff a long time. I've been in the ring with Jeff. I, I know what Jeff's about. It's okay. Neither of you do know what that's like. I do. I've been in the ring with Bully. So if either of you guys want any insight of what it's like to compete against that time, you should ask me in this match. It's what you're getting paid for, isn't it? Don't worry about what I'm getting paid for today. Don't worry about it. Inspiration might be on the side of Bully Ray, but when it comes to big match, high stakes showdowns, Hold on a minute. advantage goes away. to the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. I'm not getting near me. That's Where right, Mike. Ever since winning that title from Austin Aries in Bound for Glory, let's run down. He has been a fighting champion, defended it. Turn back challenges, left and right, go ahead, run him down. Ladder match at, at a turning point against okay. Aries. Hold on a minute, what are you looking at, bully? You got nothing to say to me. You worry about the world champion. Get your face out of my face. Other title defenses against Bobby Roode and then Aries and Roode. Title defense is on impact against the like of Christopher Daniels. Hardy has been a fighting champion. Can he catch lightning in the bottle one more time tonight? I gotta calm down. I'm all fired up, man. I'm gonna drop it. I'm gonna pass out. I'm so fired up. The stakes are high. The world title is on the line. Champion and challenger collide inside the cage. JB here to set the stage for our main event. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is your main event of the evening. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Earl Hebner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live from the world famous Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, it's your main event of the evening to be determined by pinfall, submission, or escape the cage. Introducing, first of all, standing to my left, he weighed in this morning at 275 pounds and comes to us from Hell's Kitchen, New York. He is the number one contender for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World, Bully Ray. And now, standing to my right, he weighed in this morning at 227 pounds and comes to us from Cameron, North Carolina. He is the current reigning and defending TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, the Charismatic Enigma, Jeff Hardy. Here we go, Sage, stage is set. These two men meet inside the cage and that is what is on the line, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. And let's talk strategy. 
let's talk game plans that we could anticipate for these two. Bully Ray, 50 plus pound weight advantage. Means to me that Bully is going to want to make this very physical. At the same time, opposite side of the ring, Jeff Hardy is going to want to create separation from Bully Ray to enable him to do what he does best, to shine when he goes to the top, to turn it loose, high risk moves. Let's see which of these two men is going to be successful and if they employ those game plans. A lot of mutual respect by these two over the past couple weeks. But now it's time to get after it inside the cage. And you, you talk strategy, Let Mike. Here you. we go. Let me stop you. There's been mutual respect amongst these two guys for many years. Okay, I could tell you that from behind the scenes. Okay, so I just want to set this table straight with that. A lot yeah, of history. Uh, a lot of history. Yeah, the that's tag right. team matches, but this Bully Ray's first one on one opportunity for the world heavyweight title. Hulk Hogan said, no matter what happens, make sure they remember you. But will they remember March 10th? 2013 is the day Bully Ray becomes the world champ. Well, it remains to be seen. I mean, look, as we pointed out, the size advantage. And I got to say, like I said earlier, for Hulk Hogan, someone to the level of our general manager, Hulk Hogan, to say and bring forward what the late, great Andre the Giant told Hulk Hogan uh, as far as being memorable when you're out there. I mean, that's a huge thing. Okay, so I, I can understand that. I definitely can. Okay, that's not a throwaway thing. I mean, that's a big thing for a wrestler to hear from someone like Hulk Hogan. I just think it's a little bit of, you know, a, a little ridiculous. Why? It's, uh, because it's nepotism. It's, it's the, it's the son-in-law thing. It's a little annoying. That, that's why. It's a little self-serving. It's an agenda. Oh, Bully Ray quickly has him stacked up, looking for the cover. Bully Ray has run him over a couple times here. Self-serving, I feel, of uh, Bully and Hulk. And that's my opinion. But Mike, if you're Bully Ray. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you have an opinion on that, Todd. But God, talk to Mike. Because I said nothing important well, right there. Because we don't, we don't share that opinion. So say but it. you mentioned, we did. We mentioned it earlier when you brought it up, just moments after Hulk gave him that inspirational talk. So we can bring it forward again, and we can repeat it again. After the slam, here's the cover and a quick two count for Bully. To me, it's Bully Ray trying to use that inspiration from our general manager, Hulk Hogan, in the biggest match, the biggest night of his life to succeed. Why are you getting so uh, nasty and aggressive with me? I'm just, I'm, you're attacking me here. I, I'm just talking, giving opinions. That's my job. Hardy is you're not attacking me. Hardy, the champion, though, has not been able to come out of the blocks thus far in this steel cage title defense. He's been overpowered. And Mike, this is the question that I was going to pose. Thank you. Go ahead. Those words. From the Hulkster, if you're Bully Ray, does that inspire you, or at this point do you feel like you have the weight he of the world on your shoulders? He just said it. Shoulders? I'll answer for Mike. He just told you he feels that Hogan inspired Bully. Can we move on? And at the same time, I agree with Todd because this has to be a pressure-packed situation, and yes, the weight of the world has to be on Bully's shoulders to show Hulk Hogan Oof. that Hulk Hogan was right in naming him the number one contender. How about the pressure on the world heavyweight champion that's going to deal with Bully Ray? And you see Jeff Hardy is lighting up Bully Ray, which I think is hilarious. Hardy quick at the pace. The champ has faced adversity ever since winning the title at Bound for Glory. And prior to that, what a road to redemption it was for the charismatic Enigma. 2012 Wrestler of the Year goes into the cover. Bully Ray quickly powers out there. Again, we got to talk about the stipulations. You can win pinfall, submission, or escaping. And that might work into the agility of the champ. Two ways to escape. Over the top of the cage or out the cage door. Hardy tries to climb the steel structure. Bully able to cut him off momentarily. You never know what Hardy's going to do from any point in this ring. Look at that. Oh, Look just at like that. that. Beautiful springboard splash. Bully Ray, though, just so much power, just bench presses him right off. Well, I'll explain the, the differences and what it's like to compete against someone like a Jeff Hardy, because no one asked me. So when you compete against someone like Jeff Hardy, you really got to concentrate on keeping the pressure on this man because of his, his, his fortitude and his resiliency, and, and he's reckless. He's got a reckless style. Uh-oh. Oh, wait a minute. Hardy trying to escape yet again. Oh, look at this beautiful camera shot. Beautiful camera shot. The guy's about to jump off the cage or do whatever what Hardy's oh. going to do. Uh-oh. Sound strategy here by Bully, if you think about it. Slamming the knee, slamming the leg of Hardy against the side of the steel cage. It's going to take away certain elements of Hardy's high-risk offense. And Jeff Hardy coming off of a recent knee injury as well. So that is not going to do him any What's favors. This? What's this? Oh, oh wow. Wow. Oh, oh my God. God. Doubly effective. Shoof. First the boot to the head. Wow. And then Hardy crotched. 
viciously against that top steel cable. I don't know what was worse, to kick right in his mush <laughs> or landing right on his oatmeal. Look at that, look at that quickness there. That's very impressive by Bully Ray. Really driving down the elbows, going for the cover. Well, it's good to see that he's utilizing the stuff that I taught him years back, Bully Ray. <laughs> really tough spot a minute ago watch for this, Jeff watch Hardy. This, we watch take this. another look here. Mm. Yeah, landed hard, did Hardy. And Bully's smart enough to capitalize. That's what you got to do. All right, all right, listen, I, look, I don't like Bully Ray. He hates my guts. But you know what? He's trying to win the match. He's trying to become the world heavyweight champion. I get it. And there was a sense of urgency for Hardy to try and escape there, but he didn't have Bully Ray, the challenger, in a compromising enough position. And another just huge slam there, drives him down. And the champion having to use a lot of energy, continuously kicking out of these Whoa, look at this, look at, look at this, Hardy! Whoa! <laughs> Fell into the door and almost got out. Bully, he's making a pay for it. Oh, man, this is a shot. Big, vicious clubbing blows to the back. And a clubbing clothesline there by Bully Ray. That was a scary moment for him. Hardy so quick, so agile. You got to be really careful in this environment that he doesn't slip his way out of this cage. See, what Bully's doing is keeping Hardy on the ground, preventing all of his high-flying stuff. And here's Bully now. And again, smart by Bully Ray to keep Jeff Hardy at bay. Keep him on his back. Keep him off his feet. A grinding style offense. He learned it. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to be self-serving either. So let me not. I'm not let, let me not go there. I, I, I'm sorry. Let me stop. Well, to me, at this point of the match, several minutes in, it has been advantage Bully Ray. He's had probably what would you say, 75 percent of the offense. Uh, no, no I, I, I think maybe 73. Oh God. You're right though, Mike. Uh, except for some quick spurts by Hardy. It's really been the challenger that's dictating the pace of this steel cage main event thus far. Just measuring the champion yet again, and it continues. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what it's like to compete against Bully Ray, because I wasn't asked that question either. So what it's like to compete against Bully Ray is you're dealing with someone with grizzly bear-like strength and power and toughness, and he's ruthless in the ring. He's a very ruthless competitor. Borderline barbaric and violent is Bully Ray. And there you go. Here's your insight. Thank you. Thank you for that, Taz. Oh, thanks for asking. Oh, no, wait. Get in. Be hard for Hardy to catch a breath here. Well, our uh, live audience here is torn. This massive audience is torn. And oh! Yeah, just like our audience that voted. They were torn as well with the 59-49. Here's the bully. Oh! After that huge backdrop, Elevated the champion way up in the air. Goes for the cover. Got the crowd split. How much better would this be if it was like D'Lo competing against Bully or, 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 or Sergeant of oh, Arms, Steve competing already. against Jeff Hardy? That'd be awesome. Oh, don't worry. Race is an eight's already competed in lethal lockdown. Oh, that's fine. They lost. But yeah. West Bristol, yeah. he stole a victory, didn't he? Todd, please, you don't do sarcasm, funny. You don't even do talking well, so please chill. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Right now, if you are Bully Ray, you need to keep the pressure on the champion to try and leave here as the champ. The more he lets Jeff Hardy get to his feet, the more that Bully Ray's in trouble. Momo. Hardy was thinking, twist of fate. Uh-oh. Got to hook to that full Nelson. Maybe go for a bubble bomb. Nope. Hardy had that well scouty do tuck. Oh, oh, heavy history coming. earlier, Taz. But there's the twist of fate by the champ. Well, that was explosive. That was definitely explosive. And he's had some trouble in this main event getting separation from Bully oh, Ray. Wait, wait a minute. minute. What the? <laughs> Sorry. What do we got? I didn't realize what was going on here. Wait a minute. Wes, Wes Briss going. Is that Garrett Bischoff? It is, Mike. What the hell are they doing here? What the hell is this about? Party fighting them off. Come on, Taz. Give us some insight. Well, What's this it's, about? Hey, if there's a party, we want to be part of the party. Yeah. We're, made up, we're a main event crew, baby. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Bully Ray they're protecting his boy, Hardy, who's competing against for the world title. Yeah. Protecting the main event. Oh, what is this? Here. What is this? Talked about their mutual respect. Hardy can go right up the back of Bully. Yeah, a little poetry in motion. This must be competing against. 
against each other. What the hell are you worried about all guys for? Just ball. like aces and eights to try and come out here and spoil this terrific world heavyweight title match. It's not about spoiling. Time I believe out the go. 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 And send Briscoe out of the cage too. Ooh. That's nice. That's real nice. And we now return to our regularly scheduled championship main event. Goodbye, aces and eights. And the total momentum. Okay, okay, okay. That, that, that backfired. I right, admit it, okay. Don't ask me, it backfired. And now we're back to square one here. Champion and challenger trading in the center of the cage. Well, Jeff Hardy might lose this one. The heavy hitter there, Bully. But Jeff's bringing it. Bringing out the best in each other. Hardy's getting the best of him. Unbelievable. Defying the odds there. Reversal, though, by Bully. Oh, and he's taken down by the champ again. Look at the power of Jeff Hardy. Adrenaline running through his veins. He knows what's at stake here. World heavyweight title. We've talked about his ability to string together the offense. Yes, going for the cover. Near fall there, almost put him away. Hardy now, at this point in the match, he's got a lot of distance from Bully Ray. Bully Ray's got to close that gap. Look at Hardy. Remember, this didn't, get out. didn't work out well for Hardy the first time he tried to escape. You're absolutely right. Crashed and burned in the early going of this matchup. Both men in a dangerous position again. This could be pivotal to this world title matchup. Oh, oh. what a shot! Oh. Oh. Just hear the reaction of the people in the Alamo Dome. But Jeff Hardy firing back. Champion showing all kinds of heart here tonight. Hardy trying to match him. Blow for blow! Oh, oh. Oh. Desperation move by Hardy. Able to connect with the kick, but Hardy's down and. Oh, that was a got below. Oh. Splash straight down. New champ to be crowned. Man, Hardy hit that kick, but that was a suicide type move. Put himself in harm's way. And almost inadvertently so. Desperation splash there. Bully Ray almost capitalized and won the World Heavyweight title. That unpredictability is what we have grown to expect throughout the years from Jeff Hardy. That time it almost cost him. Hardy, though, showing Ooh. the resiliency that has really typified his title reign. Snaps off that quick twist of fate again. He's going all the yeah, way up. Yeah, Bully didn't go down. And that Bully in pursuit as Hardy tries to escape. Bully's got him hooked by the foot. Hardy, whoa, 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 whoa. Was, Hardy was trying to escape and win this championship match. Hardy using his knees to the side of the head of Bully. Oh my God. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh my goodness. Hardy trying to hang this on. Big. This, this is big. This is the power of Bully out of the corner. Look out! Oh! God. An absolutely thunderous Man, power is there bomb. any way we can take another look at this? Check this out. Boom! There is no way. No oh. way. Jeff Hardy. Hit with that go. line. Got him. Oh! How did he escape? I thought for sure. I thought for sure Bully Ray was going to be new world champ right there. All the way from the top. I mean, did you see the force that the champion hit with? Well, look at the effects of, of both men. Yeah, definitely Bully Ray landing right on his rear end. That's going to shoot right up his body, that pain. But definitely getting the worst of it is Jeff Hardy. Especially with all the weight of Bully. Now, I think it's pretty cool that both of them are hurting right now. But that's just me. What a spectacular and competitive world heavyweight title cage match. We have it locked down. Both champ and challenger down is... What the hell? What, 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 what is it? Here comes the Hulkster himself. He said he was gonna get his way here to lock down to watch this match one way or another, and Brooke Hogan out there with him. They've gotta be good. What is Hulk doing out here? 
He's a general manager. I he know he's a top here if he wants. It's none of his business. This is some match for the world title. Rick Hogan as well. Joining her. Get up. Out around the steel cage to Get cheer up, on boy. her husband. Get up, brother. Yeah, yeah, come on. on. You gotta Same bully, get up. You gotta get up, brother. Come on, boy. You got to get up. You gotta get up, brother. You gotta get up, boy. That's right, keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop, brother. Just stand up. Get your wind back. Go ahead, keep going. Get up. Ace is an ace. Get up. Hogan following through on that earlier inspirational talk to Bully, but now, oh my God. Now Hogan was Cage, coaching Cage him from the corner. Being, Cage is being surrounded by aces and eights. <laughs> Bully passed Jeff Hardy a chain. They both have chains ready to fight off the aces and eights yet again like they did earlier. This is ridiculous having to do this in the middle of a world title match. Here's 
the deal, my friends. Aces and eights, playing with all the cards. Ha, ha, ha. I'm Bully Ray. I am the president of the Aces and Eights. <laughs> Running the ship, baby! Ride dirty and running the ship! Aces and eights! Oh, <laughs> yeah! It's a whole new world, my friends! It's a whole new freaking world! Yeah. It is a great night to be a bad son of a bitch! Remembered. How would he want to be remembered like this, damn it? He's remembered, my friend. He made history. <laughs> <laughs>